Hello, greetings, everyone. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> hey, great to see you all. Hello, Frank. Hannah, it's good to see you. <laughs> Hi, it's amazing to see you all. Yes, oh, likewise. You, you, you made it back home safe and sound, it looks. That's great. <laughs> Raphael, Verena, great to see everybody. Hello, Nicole. Um, we'll get started here in just a moment, OK? Uh, there's a few more folks still joining but hey i hope i hope your summers at least for those in the um you know in the calendars where the summer has kind of begun with the end of the term are going well so far <laughs> for those for those friends in uh in europe and other jurisdictions where we're still in the midst of the spring term thank you <laughs> for taking time to do this um we're really excited to have all of you in the summer academy um, we're going to, like I said, start in just a moment with a round of introductions so that you can start to get to know each other a little bit. We have a number of our outstanding, you know, senior facilitators, um, workshoppers joining as well. So they'll offer some introductions and, and we'll keep it, you know, pretty light today. Uh, typical first day, right? So we'll be doing some orientation. We'll be talking more about what to expect from us, what we can expect from you, um, and then hear more about your hopes, right, and aspirations for the Academy, since, as you know, this is an experiment in the best tradition of the workshop. Um, so, looks like we're approaching from what I think we have for the lineup, a critical mass here. So, we might, we might just go ahead and get started, and I'm wondering, and maybe we'll begin with a few introductions from our facilitators, if that's okay, and then we'll, I'll just kind of go down the list from there and just kind of call in a few folks at a time to, if you wouldn't mind, you know, just introduce yourselves. You can tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, uh, what, what are you, you know, researching these days, and most importantly, kind of what got you interested, you know, in the academy? What do you hope to get out of it? Um, and then from there, like I said, we'll, We'll keep this light. We'll do a quick introduction to the workshop. Um, uh, take our break, as you know, with these Zoom sessions. I mean, especially on a Friday after a very long term, <laughs> it can be a bit challenging. So we'll take those breaks every 75 minutes. And then when we come back from our first break, we'll hear from our current slate of uh, program directors who are telling us more about the current programs and research initiatives at the workshop, just to help fill you in and in case any of them might be appealing to you um, in your own research. So I'm wondering, uh, maybe if you wouldn't mind, Mike, uh, maybe we can start with you, um, and then I'll, I'll call on a few of our other facilitators as we go through here. It looks like Frank, I see next um, at the top there. Well, thanks, Scott. Can everybody hear me okay? All right, good. Uh, very nice to see all these eager faces, willing to uh, willing and eager to learn about the workshop and uh, what we do around here. Uh, I'm actually not outside the building, but that, that's my video background back there, uh, the home office here in uh, uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, we're very uh, pleased to see so many people from so many parts of the world uh, interested in learning more about the uh, Ostrom Workshop, uh, its history and its current activities uh, and its methodology and uh, to see how this can work in your uh, research uh, or, or how you might learn from it, even if you don't use it directly, that's fine. Uh, I'm a retired faculty member from political science, uh, but still hiring around the workshop. I'm a senior fellow, a research fellow at the workshop and uh, have been administrator uh, in various uh, roles over the years, the last uh, 30 years now, I guess, pretty much my whole career. And um, I'm really excited about this stuff. Uh, as I think you'll see by the length of my slides for my presentation next week, uh, which I'll be posting hopefully later today uh, to get you ready for next week. And um, uh, my interests right now uh, are in enjoying retirement, basically, uh, playing golf and uh, staying involved in the workshop. Uh, I'm interested in health policy here in the United States, but I don't quite know how to handle it or approach it, so I'm still kind of working on a book in that area, but but uh, uh, it's not moving forward real well because I can't get my hands around it. 
uh, and um, also doing some little projects uh, on commons and polycentric governance and all the fun things you're going to learn about here in this um, uh, series of sessions. So welcome. Uh, I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, and please remember, this is an experiment. This is our first effort to do this <laughs> remotely. Uh, and uh, But we're, again, really excited to have so many people interested. So, Scott, I guess you want to go to Frank next? Well said, Mike. Absolutely. Um, yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, Frank, if you wouldn't mind. Um, and then after that, I think I saw Dan. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's great to see you all. And uh, just like Mike, I'm not actually sitting in front of the workshop building, far from it. I'm sitting at the other end of the globe. I'm in the Netherlands. And speaking of uh, backgrounds, I'm very intrigued about the background of uh, Rijal, who seems to be sitting in front of a palm tree that is actually waving in the wind, but maybe that's all also virtual. I, I, I'd like to hear more about yeah, that. Yeah, it's just virtual. <laughs> Then maybe Deborah sitting in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment with an actual real palm tree in the back. That's uh, like to hear more about that. I'm, I'm situated in the Netherlands where I work at Utrecht University, uh, Copernicus Institute, um, Sustainable Development. Um, my, my history, my, my affiliation, my experience with the workshop goes back quite some time. Between 2003, 2008, I was uh, working on my dissertation with Lynn and other people. That's how I know Mike. Uh, I've also interacted in that capacity with them. I've interacted with these people in other capacities as well. I'm interested in shared resources, commons that will come as no surprise to, to, to you. I've been doing some work in Bangladesh, uh, the Dutch Antilles, uh, and I'm looking forward to share my experiences, but much more hearing about your experiences in the weeks to come. So I think I'm going to leave it at this. Oh, I'm the, I'm, I'm the editor of the International Journal of the Commons. Maybe that's... Uh, that's, that's uh, a thing that uh, that is of interest and that will come uh, that that'll, that'll that'll play a role in some of the some of the activities that I'll have in this uh, in this what Scott calls an experiment. Thank you so much, Frank. And and for those of you who aren't aware, Frank gave an outstanding Oster Memorial lecture um, not too long ago, which we'll be talking you know more about as as his date approaches. He'll be speaking with all of you in particular in week four when we get to publishing and placement, um, including of course reflecting on his his uh, wonderful um, work at the at the Journal of the Commons. Um, and, and then Dan, maybe if we could go to turn to you next. Sure, hi everyone, I'm uh, Dan Cole. Uh, I've been in the workshop not as long as, as Mike, but uh, since about started presenting in the late nineties, I think once in a while at the, at the workshop and then became more involved uh, in the 2000s. Uh, I teach the uh, IAD seminar uh, in, in the workshop. My main home is uh, the law school, and uh, I also uh, am shared split with, with SPIA. But the good news is that I'm uh, in the process of retiring from both of those. Uh, and uh, once I'm an emeritus faculty member, I'll be uh, almost exclusively in and around the workshop. Uh, I've got a bunch of projects, most of which relate to Bloomington School uh, Ostrom stuff. Uh, several of those are with Mike, uh, as, as usual, including maybe even one or two he doesn't know about yet. Um, unlike uh, Mike and Frank, I am actually sitting in front of the workshop. I'm just kidding. I'm not actually sitting in front of the workshop. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very far away from the workshop uh, in the outer reaches. I'm actually not in Bloomington. Uh, I'm in a place called New Unionville, Indiana. Uh, and yes, I know it's a surprise to find that we have internet here, uh, but we do. Anyway, I look forward to uh, uh, hearing from, from everyone uh, for the next six weeks and uh, uh, and uh, learning with you. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Absolutely, Dan. No, thank you for joining. Um, excellent. And then uh, just in terms of our other facilitators and mentors, I see um, Jamie as well. Maybe Jamie, would you want to say a quick hello? One of our fantastic Ostrom fellows here. Hi. Oh, I think you might still be muted, Jamie. Sorry. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank yeah, you. Perfect. Oh, two Jamies. It's two oh, Jamies. Jamies. oh, sorry. Okay. I'm like me, two Jamie. Jamies. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Jamie Beasley. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I should have realized. Yeah, no, J Jamie Carini. Sorry. No worries. That's awesome. So I will have that fancy picture on my backdrop soon. <laughs> it used to be in my Zoom. It used to be in my Zoom account until apparently you know got lost in one of the latest up, uh, you know, latest versions of Zoom. So sorry, guys. Anyhow, but I am an Ocean Fellow at the workshop and I've gotten to learn from so many cool people like Mike McGinnis and Dan Cole and Bill Bloomquist. And so um, I'm just really happy to be here to be learning again and then to be working with a couple of you on your own projects that interact with the Ostrom thought. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I should have clarified I'm a PhD student as well. So um, at Indiana University. Absolutely. No, thank you so much, Jamie. Thanks for joining. And it's a wonderful perspective. Um, as you can see here, we're, we're hoping to give you kind of a variety of viewpoints <laughs> so that you're not just kind of hearing um, hearing from the, uh, you know, the choir, basically. Um, so th these are just a few of our facilitators, as you saw on the Canvas homepage, everybody. Um, and we'll, we'll turn to that in just a moment so you can get a sense for the others, um, including Bill Blomquist and Edu Brondizio, um, et cetera, as we go through here. Um, but before we do that, I'd love to hear just maybe a quick lightning round of introductions from all of our, from you, from all of our participants, so we can get a better sense um, where you're all coming from, and most importantly, kind of again, what you hope to get out of this experience. So we'll we'll do um, we'll do that really quickly um, before we turn to the rest of the first bit of the orientation for today. So if it's okay, we might just go by what I see on my screen, and I see Jamie Beasley, sorry, um, up first. Um, followed, it looks like, by Rijal, and then um, after that, uh, Vishen. And apologies in, in advance, if I mispronounce anybody's name, please just call me out, let me know. Uh, but Jamie, please, I think I got yours right. <laughs> so yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Jamie Beasley. Um, I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Political Science at Clark Atlanta University. Um, so I'm in dissertation stage. Um, I just hope to get uh, more ideas, uh, different perspectives than what I'm used to hearing. I'm very excited to hear from all of you all. I learned about this from Dr. Oyurinde, who is um, an alum of you all's department. Um, and so I'm very excited to meet all of you and to talk with you all more. As are we, Jamie. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining. Great to have you. Um, so it looks like Rijal is next. And then, like I said, after that, Vishen. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Rijal. I'm originally from Indonesia, but currently I'm doing my PhD here in Finland. So I'm interested in joining this workshop because I'm working with a PhD based article in which it, in my in one of my article I utilize Ostrom's uh, like on uh, common uh, property regimes. I mostly work on uh, the peatland fires and palm oil expansions in Indonesia. And I hope to learn more about Ostrom framework because I feel that what I understand or what I'm working with now is I use Ostrom framework in very traditional ways on uh, the natural resources governance, for example. But I do not know how this framework can be utilized in the current development, like I can say, and can so from articles on the, uh, for example, on the uh, in, in, internet or knowledge and, and so on. So I'm really left from this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Rigel. Fantastic. And funnily enough, I'll actually be in um, Helsinki in about a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, well, I don't know if we'll have a chance to meet up then, but if so, I'll, I'll reach out just in case. Um, so yeah, uh, Vishen, please, let's turn to you next. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Vishan Ramaji. Thank you, Scott. Um, I am here in North Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, it's just starting to warm up. Um, I'm, I'm an assistant professor here. Uh, I've been in, very interested in Ostromian ideas for a while since graduate school, but you know the graduate school I went to wasn't really, um, you know, conducive to that kind of uh, approach to uh, work. Uh, and so I've, I mean, I've always been interested in Ostromian ideas. Have 
read a lot of Ostrom's work, and I had a chance to uh, uh, be an Adam Smith fellow at the Mercator Center, where we got to actually, Jamie was there as well. Uh, so I got to uh, engage with Ostromian ideas um, through an intermediary, I suppose, I, I guess, uh, you know, not directly through the Ostrom workshop, but a lot of people who were inspired by Ostromian ideas. Um, and so I've, I've written some stuff. I always kind of found um, Ostrom and Ostromian scholars, like you guys, very um, uh, inspiring. And, and uh, I really love the interdisciplinary approach, but I've always kind of uh, felt like, you know, I don't belong to this particular discipline because it's so, you know, disciplinary boundaries are very real. Um, and so I've always kind of uh, been looking for avenues to engage across disciplines. And I, I very much look forward to uh, interacting with you and learning from you actually, because I've never actually been formally trained uh, by, um, you know, Australian scholars such as yourself. So, um, I'm very excited and thank you for accepting me to this program. I'm very excited to be part of it. As are we. And I'm originally from and Nepal. I, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> brilliant. I love it. I think we have to cover every time zone possible. I think I think this is, yeah, it's, it's lovely. And and I should have said as well, um, if you'd like to start using the chat as we go through here, everybody, and just kind of start, you know, tossing out, you know, links, anything else that you find relevant to what's being discussed, feel free. This is an opportunity for all of us to learn from each other. Um, and it looks like next we have uh, Hannah, Nicole, and Desiree. Me? Uh, yeah, and I think there are two Hannahs, uh, There are right? two Hannahs, and <laughs> yeah. I have to start being more specific. Hannah Schrieber, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no um, problem. No yeah. problem. I, uh, first of all, sorry for the weird sound from my computer. Uh, I hope that you can still understand me. It's okay. We sure can. Uh, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, so I'm uh, as Vitan, also assistant professor at the University of Warsaw in Poland. And I'm, I'm a holder of a research grant uh, that concerns application of uh, Ostrom's framework to international heritage regimes. And I have spent amazing six weeks uh, at workshop Ostrom in March and half of April. I fell in love with workshop Ostrom community uh, with the, the friendliness, kindness uh, and the approach uh, and I'm happy that I can be also part of the school and continue my great adventure. And just, I'm happy Bishan, we are not, I'm not alone as assistant professor here, but also would like to say that I'm reading right now your article about taxonomy of goods and I'm using it and applying your article to my, uh, to my work. So really it's great to have this variety and I'm looking forward to inspiring discussion and insights with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, it was a joy to have you in Bloomington. And needless to say, we hope to see all of you in Bloomington <laughs> soon, including for the next WOW, which we'll be talking more about um, WOW 7 coming up. Um, so I think we have Nicole next, um, and then uh, Desiree and Raphael. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Nicole. I'm a doctoral student at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. Um, I'm originally from Mauritius um, and I studied in the States and Canada, so um, a bit of a mixed background. Uh, but I'm at the Department of Architecture and my dissertation um, is about the notion of landscape commons, which I'm trying to define. So I'm coming from another field um, and really looking for, forward to learning from you guys um, and getting kind of a deeper understanding of um, yeah, common theory um, in order to apply it to, to my field and hopefully also make a contribution to um, common theory more broadly. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to it. It's a pleasure to meet you, Nicole. Thank you so much. Um, lovely. And then, yeah, so Desiree and then Raphael and then Ayoko. Yes, hello everyone. Great to be here. My name is Desiree. I'm a very, uh, early PhD student from Germany. I'm with University of Freiburg in Southern Germany, but I'm actually based in Bremen because in the North, because I also cooperate with the Leibniz Center for Tropical Marine Research. And yeah, that already tells you a little about my, my focus. So I'm interested in coastal governance and um, yeah, 
Uh, my research focus had, has shifted a bit since my application, so now I'm not looking anymore at coastal governance in the Baltic Sea, but I will be looking at uh, coastal governance and epistemic politics uh, in East Africa or Tanzania and Kenya to be more specific. And I started engaging uh, with Ostrom's framework in my master thesis, where I worked on knowledge commons and the sharing of scientific data. And I tried to use the IAD framework and found it really exciting to work with. And currently, I'm um, also here with a couple of colleagues from uh, the ISC Early Career Network. So yeah, I see Lavanya and Verena and Naira here. And uh, we have a discussion group where we try to talk about um, how power works into the IRD. So we'll, I, I guess I'm speaking for everyone now when I think that we're also excited to, to learn a little more about that and maybe discuss with the others. And yeah, I'm sure that even though my focus has shifted a little that Ostrom's framework uh, or frameworks are really relevant to, to understanding my own work. Yeah, I'm just very happy to be here. We're happy to have you, Desiree, and it's completely natural for the research focus to, to shift. That's, that's quite all right, <laughs> and it's an exciting time to be looking at the Baltics generally. Um, so fantastic. Uh, uh, Raphael and then Ayako, and it looks like after that we have um, uh, Kahidi. So okay, um, yeah. Raphael uh, Limby. Oh, did, did I miss somebody else first? Yeah, there's two Raphaels in my screen. There's two Raphaels. I'm so sorry. But the so, other one is just Raphael. So I was like, yeah, maybe it's, it's the maybe other it's one. Maybe it's just him. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah Raphael Limby, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> you go first. So yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Raphael Limby. I'm from Brazil, but uh, I'm currently based in Michigan, where I'm a PhD student in the Department of Community Sustainability, working with Professor Maria Claudia Lopez. And what I expect from this workshop that I've been currently working at a project where we're trying to implement uh, technological solutions for off-grid communities at the Brazilian Amazon. And I have experience of Austin's framework in the context of like social ecological systems. So what I aim to do is to get a better understanding knowledge of Austin's framework and other things such as knowledge commons like Desiree mentioned and also try to get this social ecological systems framework and incorporate technology in it in a way that I can bridge like social technical systems literature and social ecological systems literature. And yeah, nice to meet everyone. Looking forward for the next weeks. Absolutely. Nice to meet you too, Raphael Limby. We look forward to hearing from the other Raphael in just a moment. <laughs> um, Ayako Ito, uh, we'll turn yes. to you next and then Katie. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Ayako Ido. I'm joining from Japan. Um, I'm an academic researcher at the Graduate School of International Development at Nagoya University in Japan. Um, I have been a development consultant for Japan's official development assistance to developing countries um, for some time and also have been teaching at Nagoya University in, uh, on uh, international development. Um, my research focus is on community-based natural resource management with a particular focus on community uh, forest, uh, uh, with the community forestry and in Cambodia. And I won the research grant from Japan's gover uh, gov Japanese government recently. And I like to apply Ostrom's SES framework to for this research. So I uh, that was one of my uh, motives motivations to join this uh, workshop. And um, so I'm particularly would like to uh, deepen my knowledge on uh, various types of analytical framework related with Ostrom through this workshop. And so thank you very much for uh, providing me with this a wonderful opportunity and I'd like to get to know you all uh, very well through this workshop. Thank you very much. Oh, likewise, Ayako, thank you so very much. And thanks everybody for being flexible on the on the time zones. I know it's quite early or quite late for many of you, so we really appreciate it. <laughs> um, so uh, Kahidi next and then uh, Tierney and Libertad. Hello everyone, I'm Hadi. Uh, I'm joining the workshop from uh, Bremen, but I'm from Senegal. And I recently started my PhD at the Leibniz Center for Tropical Marine Research. And my topic deal with um, 
the, the analysis of the interaction between fisheries and uh, and uh, conservations. And I want to use, I want to apply the ID framework and mainly the network of access and action situation on my work. And I'm looking forward to 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 have um, deeper knowledge on the ID and also on other related framework. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. It's such a pleasure to have you in the Academy. Great to see you. Um, and it looks like we have yeah, Tierney next and Libertad and then um, other Hannah, Hannah Feigenbaum. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Tierney Bamrick. Um, I'm an early PhD student at uh, University of Colorado at Denver, but I'm actually in Western New York right now. Um, which you can't tell because it's blurry, you know, so it's very sneaky. Um, my interests are generally in arts and culture and the kind of splits into two veins, kind of nonprofit and public sector management. And also um, I'm interested in applying the Oster frameworks to kind of reconceptualize how we study arts and culture through more collective lens. Um, very new in using or applying any of the frameworks and just very excited to be here. And I really appreciate the work of everyone to bring this together because it's an exciting opportunity. Now, well said, Tierney. And we'll be thanking our brilliant staff, um, including Emily Castle and David Price and Carrie McMullen, who did so much of the heavy lifting uh, to make this happen repeatedly, but thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then Libertad, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Libertad Castro. I'm from Mexico City. And I teach a course that is called Science and Society at the University of Mexico. And actually, I'm working with agriculture, peri-urban agriculture. It's a kind of agriculture that has been successful for seven centuries before the Spanish arrived. And it's in the middle of the Me in Mexico City itself, but it's in the middle of the city. And it's a very interesting way. It's, it's managed by a, by a community. Um, it's very interesting for me to understand what are the, pre the external pressures and the organizational stuff that can explain how to how to this kind of agriculture could be could survive in seven centuries. Um, I expect from this workshop that I have new ideas about how to analyze the topic, my topic, and also I would like to to fill the gaps. Uh, that I have in my understanding about the Ostrom theory. So good luck for everyone. Fantastic, Libertad. Thank you so much. Um, and we, we are, we'll talk more about this, but I use lucky to have global gateways around the world, including Mexico City and Berlin. Um, so we'll be talking more about some of the gatherings that are in the planning stages for some of those places. Um, but uh, Hannah Weigenbaum, I uh, will turn to you next. And then it uh, looks like um, Kyung Cho after that. Yeah, good morning, everybody. I'm joining from Berlin, actually, uh, in Germany. And um, yeah, here's already afternoon and very sunny today. Um, yeah, I'm associated with a research project on biodiversity protection in urban areas through nature-based solutions. And I'm mainly interested in the point of like police centric governance actually. And I help, like I'm looking forward to get a little bit more or learn a little bit more on that um, in, like in the frame of the um, uh, work workshop, uh, Ostrom uh, framework. And um, yeah, like thanks for having me here. And I'm yeah, looking forward uh, to learn from everyone here. Well said, and I can tell there's quite an opportunity cost for being inside in Berlin today. So thanks for joining us, Hannah. Um, uh, so yeah, Kyung Chul, we'll turn to you next. And then it looks like um, Jose and then Deborah. Okay, hello. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, can you hear me? Okay, so I'm, I'm sure Kyung Chul. Yeah, I'm Kyung Chul Kim, and you can just call me Casey. I'm originally from Seoul, South Korea, but I'm, I'm studying my... Uh, I'm, Beginning my third year, Dr. C, uh, Dr. City at the University of Georgia, Department of Public Administration and Policy. And because it just looks quite international, so it's not as uh, country Georgia, but it's near Atlanta. Um, yeah, so, um, and I have studied um, how AI system is going to impact governmental structuring and functioning, basically focus on human AI interaction perspective. And I'm trying to 
uh, expand the scope to the societal level and, you know, like in the cognitional, cognitive dimension, like how human beings and AI systems is going to, are going to work together and impact together and also like societal level. That's pretty much new phenomena and there is no really uh, substantial framework to understand this. So I'm trying to kind of apply, uh, for instance, IAD or um, institutional grammar like rule and norms, how, how they are gonna be imp uh, impacting or working together as a new dynamics. That's my new interest. And I'm also trying to incorporate the cybersecurity stuff, um, trying, uh, trying to connect uh, cyber dimensions or um, digital dimensions to the physical dimensions. So I'm work also working with the Georgia Institute of Technology, to, uh, the Cybersecurity Summer Institute. So I'm pretty much uh, looking forward to expand my scope and at the same time connecting uh, management technology and the big uh, big framework stuff uh, that I'm looking forward to learning from here. So I'm pretty much excited. So thank you. We're excited as well, Casey. Great, great, great to have you. And as you can tell, everybody, it's a big tent, and it just it just underscores the frankly the the legs um, that these frameworks can have across so many different issue areas and collective action challenges. We'll talk more about this, Casey, but we just had a really nice, we called it the uh, transatlantic dialogue on the future of humanity, quite humbly, but it focused on AI governance uh, with a few institutions in, in Paris last week. So a lot of great people involved in that discussion. It was recorded as well. Um, so yeah, it'll be a great networking opportunity, I think. Excellent. So I, I think we said it was Jose next and then Deborah, but everybody's, uh, the order keeps changing. So apologies if I get that wrong. Um, great. Hello, uh, my name is Jose. I am originally from Peru, but I am a final year PhD student here at the University of Surrey in the UK. Um, I study in tourism management, a little bit different to what everything has mentioned. Um, and my project has been about working with the City Council of Barcelona uh, and the stakeholders of the destination to co-create sustainability-oriented innovations. And these are mainly new policy options for the destination to manage over tourism and to overcome problems that have been created with residents due to tourism. And um, interestingly enough, uh, those uh, innovations that were created by the stakeholders were mainly policy innovations, institutional changes to, the, to, the, to how we manage tourism in the city. Um, and most of them have uh, structures that can be equated to a polycentric management structure in, in, which, in ways in which this could be managed uh, by several stakeholders, not only depending on the government, but working with the private sector and having involvement from residents in decision-making. Um, so I have been using the IAD framework to analyze this uh, co-created innovations. Um, and I'm looking forward to learning more about you uh, to further my research and make it more rigorous. I'm really in the final stages of my PhD and finalizing my thesis writing. So I think this is uh, the best moment to really fine tune uh, those details. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose, fantastic. Um, really, really appreciate this. Uh, and it looked like next we had Deborah, if I'm not mistaken. Um, hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever <laughs> you are. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm in India, I'm based out of India. I'm, I, my hometown is Cochin in Kerala. Um, the palm trees outside my window are real, I'm, but that's not Kochi. I'm in Bangalore. I'm just traveling for work. Um, so, um, so yeah, so I'm actually a fellow with the University of Chicago Trust based out of India. Um, I'm a tech policy fellow. I, uh, I have an academic background in uh, engineering and public policy and governance. Um, as a fellow, I work with uh, an NGO, a grassroots NGO um, in India called the Foundation for Ecological Security. Um, they are quite steeped, uh, as an organization, we're quite steeped into um, commons, uh, commoning, um, building out community um, institutions at um, the local level and um, helping nested levels of governance, etc. But uh, I'm trying to bridge the um, technology aspect um, with this and really looking at angles of how um, community can um, drive technology narratives um, through stewardship of data. Um, things like that. Uh, so this, um, I see this academy as an opportunity to 
understand a lot of the work I'm doing a little more systematically. Um, and also like a lot of y'all have said, um, you know, doing that interdisciplinary bridging between um, this theory and um, other streams of work, like the, there was architecture, there was engineering, AI, all of those things. So I'm also in that space um, and really looking forward to this and interacting with all of you. Thank you. Excellent, Ebra. And, and, and you win best background. Fantastic. <laughs> um, it looks like on my screen anyway, uh, Naira and then uh, Wivina and uh, our next and then Amina. Hey everyone, I'm Naira. Um, I'm one of Desiree's friends together with Verena and Le Labanya. I don't know if someone else has joined since. Um, and I'm a PhD student at King's College London. Um, but currently not based in London, but in Colombia, um, working from here and I'll be connecting from here throughout the, this course. Um, and my, in my PhD, I look at questions of equity and biodiversity conservation um, around how we understand equity, um, why we might care about it and kind of what kind of challenges we see towards um, getting there. Um, and I mean, on the one side, I, I work alongside a big, um, effort by different organizations to build up an equity evaluation tool that's kind of been piloted around the world and is kind of soon to be scaled up quite a lot as it seems in the light of the um, global biodiversity framework um, and in my PhD I kind of analyzed do some kind of meta-analysis of, of, of those evaluations but I'm also trying to take a step back and kind of re-ask those questions well what actually does um, equity mean um, from an understanding of a recognition of conservation governance often being quite polycentric, very much multi-level and multi-actor um, situations. Um, so I've been kind of doing some theoretical work on how to understand equity within polycentric governance theory. Um, and kind of, I've, I've been delving into that quite directly, but realizing actually it would have been nice to take a bit more of a general understanding of, of kind of Ostrom theory or related theory. So I'm really looking forward to getting that more general perspective now before I then, you know, pick my own angle to it. So uh, looking forward to that and meeting all of you, of course. Thanks. Absolutely, Naira. No, thank you. Brilliant. And an exciting time to be in Colombia. Um, fantastic. So with uh, Wivina uh, will be next and then Amina. And I might be mispronouncing a few of your names, <laughs> which I really apologize for. Um, but uh, with, so it looks like on my screen, it's um, Wivina uh, Mispini. Um, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we sure can. I'm so sorry. Yep. OK. Yes, I'm Wivina Mispini uh, at the University of Kassel, Germany. But originally, I'm a Tanzanian from East Africa. And I am a PhD scholar or student uh, doing focusing on the evolution of farmers, cooperatives of farmers organizations in relation to land use change in the southern slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro, East Africa. And in my work, I am mostly looking or working with the IAD framework and other related theories such as transaction costs. So the aim of me or my expectations from this workshop or some academy is learning more and getting to see how I can apply the Ostrom's theories in my work. Yeah. And my background is in natural resource governance also, but from a sociological perspective. Thank you very much and nice to meet you all. Super interesting. I mean, it, it, this is one thing I love about the workshop is an intellectual smorgasbord. So thank you so much. <laughs> um, and then um, Amina Gorbani, yep. Yeah. Hi, thanks Scott. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Amina Gorbani. I'm an associate professor um, in Delft, University of Technology, the Netherlands. And I'm not, new, I'm not new to Ostrom, so I've been using uh, IAD, IG, um, and SES frameworks and the design principles since 2009 when I started my PhD back then. Um, and I saw Lynn once. She came to Delft after winning the Nobel Prize. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, I'm a computer scientist by education. And uh, the reason that I thought this workshop would be nice was that it was an online opportunity. So why not use it? And 
I've been using um, uh, Ostrom's work together with um, social simulation, so agent-based modeling all along. So it's mostly been a simulation tool for me and the focus has been um, a technological system. So for example, community energy systems. Um, so I've had le less experience in collecting empirical data um, with Ostrom's work. And that's why I thought it would be interesting to see how the empirical side of things work um, and also get involved with the workshop. People have been in blue. I think I was in Bloomington in 2014, actually. Um, and besides, so I'm kind of shifting from energy transition and community energy systems to climate change. And I see more and more ecological case studies that I'm dealing with, uh, such as flood risk management. And therefore, I thought it would be nice to see how socio-ecological systems are studied uh, next to socio-technical systems that I study. Fantastic, Amina. Thank you so much for joining as well. And this is one of the benefits of online. You're absolutely right. Uh, in the future, as a heads up, we do hope to have more of an intensive one week in person format. But I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot of benefits to this. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, Sridipta and Verena um, after that. And it looks like Renata and then Lavanya. <laughs> so I think first up was um, Sridipta. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah, we sure can. Okay. I have to speak very softly. I'm in Irvine, California. It's very early in the morning and I don't want to wake up my flatmate. Um, no problem. I, I know she slept late last night. So I'm a PhD student at UC Irvine in the Department of Urban Planning and Public Policy. And I'm interested in the digitization of uh, um, environmental governance in India. Uh, I'm just finishing my qualifying exams right now. Uh, it should be, should be done with it by the end of spring. And so I'm developing my um, prospectus. And I thought this was a good time to, I've been following the research, uh, the, the, the Austrian workshop for some time now. Um, and so I thought this was a good opportunity to, uh, to engage, to, to learn more about this. Um, I've read some of it, but I have to say, I, I, I'm a very, uh, I'm uninitiated theoretically to these ideas, so uh, I'm hoping to learn. Um, yeah, and I've, I've trained as an architect, as an urban planner, um, as an urban historian. So I'm a little intellectually, I wouldn't say confused, but eclectic. <laughs> so that makes sense to, to it makes make sense to pursue different kinds of theory at this stage when I'm um, trying to streamline my thoughts, right? I, I would love for this to be in person. When I applied, I actually didn't know that this was online, um, but yeah, we'll make the best out of Zoom. Absolutely. Nice to see everyone, thank you. No, nice to see you too, wonderful. And, and you're in good company and, that, and that's a great way to put it. Um, oh, I did just get a, a quick note from one of our participants who's about to board a flight and wanted to say a quick hello, if that's okay. So um, Anahi Ocampo, if you'd like to, Say hello, feel free. Thank you, Scott. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm sorry I'm on at, a, at an airport. <laughs> um, my name is Anaí Ocampo. I'm from Bolivia originally, uh, but I'm uh, working as an assistant professor at the University of Chile in the forestry science faculty. Um, I was very interested in joining this group because uh, my, my interest was climate change adaptation uh, um, what are users organizations in Chile facing drought? And at some point I realized I was in fact uh, talking about collective action and talking about a common goods. So even though that I started my, my career as a interdisciplinary and social ecologist uh, in, interested in, in, in how people make, uh, how we, um, integrate no type, types of knowledge as science and society. society um, I realized I needed to understand more about political sciences and all the Eleanor Ostrom's work. I, of course, I knew her work, but I had never had to, to really get into and use it. So um, I, this was a great opportunity for me to get to know more people and understand how this theory is applied um, in reality. So I'm very happy to finally put a face on many of the, the papers I have been reading and, and using. 
Absolutely, and I great, great to meet you and 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 safe travels. <laughs> um, and Brina, thanks for your patience. We'll turn to you next, and then Renata and Lavanya. Sure, thank you very much, and hello to everyone, uh, whatever time it is at your place. Um, I'm joining you from Bremen as well, um, Germany, but I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Kassel with the section on international and cultural policy and environmental governance. Uh, my supervisor is Andreas Thiel, who has um, been a workshopper for quite a while, I think, and so I was just like, um, delved right into it, basically. Um, in my PhD, I'm looking to bring together the role of power with um, institutions and institutional change in the context of land use change in a tropical mountain social ecological system, which is the Kilimanjaro um, in northern Tanzania. And Vivina, speaking earlier, we are uh, basically a PhD tandem in the same project, but having different projects. Um, also, there's a couple of my colleagues from the section, and I've seen and it has been mentioned, um, some of the power discussion group uh, people it was in the ECN. So, so exciting to see you all and also to see some of the names whose paper I've been reading as well. And like, yeah, getting some kind of personal input. Um, right after this summer academy, I will be starting, uh, starting off to go to Tanzania for fieldwork um, just a few days after the last Friday, actually. Um, and I was very excited to see that this would like, fit in right before. And um, while I have been reading a lot and I had some of Ostrom's work in my master's um, studies as well, I think I'm still lacking some deeper and more comprehensive understanding of it all. And think, um, yeah, this communication, the discussions within this group and all these different perspectives coming together, is, it's. Um, it's a very great opportunity. Thank you for that. I feel the exact same way, Verena. I'm so glad it works well with your field work too. And I love those happy coincidences. <laughs> um, lovely. And then Renata and uh, Lavanya. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the admission to this uh, workshop. Uh, it's really a great chance uh, to be here. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Renata. Uh, I am um, uh, doing my PhD at Castle University, the same section as uh, Vivina and Verena. Uh, but I'm, current, I'm based in Doha, Qatar. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so my research base is in Germany, but I'm originally from Brazil. <laughs> so, but, um, and uh, I'm using, so I'm in the, currently in the phase of analyzing my data and conceptualizing my project. I'm using the EID framework to uh, policy analysis and to analyze uh, 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 policy in Jordan. So Jordan is where my case study is. Um, analyzing a policy for freshwater relocation and compensation of farmers with treated wastewater. And I'm using the EID as a tool to conceptualize this policy as a, a, a policy with different action arenas and action situations within the arena. So. Um, I am. I have collected uh, some questions and some um, struggles <laughs> in applying the, the the EID to my dissertation. So I'm very happy to have this chance to talk about it here, uh, because in my research I'm dealing with really different uh, uh, arenas uh, of pro uh, provision of uh, uh, water infrastructure, um, uh, allocation policies, and then the use of treated wastewater by farmers. And um, so I'm, yeah, using the EID to to kind of conceptualize and understand the system. And I'm also using the grammar to uh, the institutional grammar to currently analyze uh, the the main policies uh, from this different uh, network of of action arenas and so on. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the exchange. And uh, yeah, it's a great chance to be here. Excellent, Renata, thank you so much. And, and Lavanya, um, who I have to embarrass for a second because Lavanya was so incredibly helpful throughout the process of creating um, this summer academy. So I'm thrilled that you're able to participate, but you also deserve a lot of all of our thanks, frankly, in helping to craft um, what you'll see before you. But it's not Lavanya's fault for whatever you don't like, okay? It's our fault. <laughs> but Lavanya, please. <laughs> Hi, Scott. I love the way y'all have been so open and democratic about the way y'all have crafted this and thank you for giving me that opportunity and I'm so looking forward to this coming month. 
So I uh, have a PhD in political science. I work as an assistant professor at the Tulani Hyderabad campus. I've been working with uh, the Ostrom uh, frameworks for quite some time, mainly in forest and uh, uh, water commons. Uh, right now, I'm very interested in looking how, at how political ecology and the Ostrom framework can be brought together. So basically, I'm looking for an understanding of the epistemological grounding uh, of the Ostrom framework, so I'm able to bring in questions of power. And as already mentioned, we have this lovely uh, uh, reading group within the uh, early career network, and uh, my friends are right here, and they mentioned it as well. Uh, so basically, that's uh, what brings me here, and I'm very excited to be here. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you again, Lavanya. And it's, a, it's been such a pleasure to partner with IASC and with, with ECN on this. Um, it looks like, uh, I don't want to say other Raphael, <laughs> but the next Raphael um, is up next. And then, and then Raj after that. Yeah, so, uh, so, so thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, yeah, so, the, um, so I'm speaking to you from, from Nairobi. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Kenyan, but I'm doing my, my PhD in uh, University College Dublin. I mean, the second year. I'm uh, doing the, um, the PhD within uh, an ERC, European Research uh, Council funded project. So looking at the idea of land in international law and how it's treated within uh, the various branches of international law. Yeah, yes, yeah. So uh, the, um, within the project, there are uh, three PhD students and then I'm one. So my case study is in Kenya and I, I, will, I have an interest of uh, studying you know the, the, the management of community land within within Kenya because still a huge uh, percentage of land in Kenya and of course in most in some of the, the African countries are held communally so this is how I get um, you know to, to know about the, the Ostrom you know workshop and the governance of the commons you know, the tragedy of the commons and debunking that yeah so it's um, I, I'm really grateful I'd be invited to participate here today. Yeah, and then, um, yes, I, I look forward to learning from everyone. So thank you. Thank you, Raphael. And, and you have several recovering lawyers among your facilitators, so <laughs> including Dan and I, so you have a lot of support. Um, thank brilliant. you, thank you. And, and, and one thing, so I, I, so I studied at Notre Dame, so you can see from, from the well, shots. That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Excellent. Yes, I, I got my, my master's there, but um, unfortunately, at that time, I didn't get an opportunity to come to, um, to the law school at Indiana, but one of my professors back here in Nairobi did his PhD in Indiana, so, yeah. Oh, fantastic. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah one, of my, one of my last leaves was, was under the dome at, at Notre Dame. In fact, that's where I really got in deep with some of the positive peace stuff, so a lot of fond memories there. So, yeah, we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to compare notes, Raphael. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, lovely. Okay. And it looks like uh, we're approaching the end, guys, of this. So well done. It, it looks like Raj is next. Um, and of course, we'll have to let Emily and David, if you're on, introduce themselves as well. Um, but that might be it, unless I missed anybody. So Raj, please. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Raj from New Delhi, India. Uh, it's quite hot today here, 46 degrees C. <laughs> and uh, I'm a fourth year PhD student uh, located at the Center for Law and Governance, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, India. And my PhD attempts to look at the relationship between regulation and sustainable consumption behaviors uh, around the material uh, single use plastics. So, yes, uh, kind of looking at collective actions for plastic pollution mitigation strategies. Uh, I got introduced to Ostrom, oh, sorry, I read this paper, the behavioral approach to rational choice theory. Oh, it took me some time to understand that. <laughs> but uh, I am using a lot of those ideas, so mainly social norms, how informal community, uh, the norms in the informal kind of way in communities could regulate our behaviors. Uh, what I'm aiming to looking forward, okay, I have a really large interdisciplinary background, uh, so I don't fit anywhere. So, okay, I wanted to fit somewhere. <laughs> uh, so, but partly I'm lost, partly I'm excited. Uh, so I'm really excited to learn uh, and let's say strengthen my confidence uh, through this 
platform and really excited to meet and learn to all my participants in this call. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Raj. And yeah, we always hope you consider the workshop to be a second home. <laughs> a lot of us are in the same boat. <laughs> Um, brilliant. And, and did I miss any of our, any colleagues, any participants before we turn to Emily and David? We did it. No, did we not do it? Oh, I'm so sorry, Prook. So yeah, please. <laughs> Good to see Hello. you. Good another, to see you. I, I have to say, yes. Yeah, another, absolutely. Yes, just key contributor um, to making this all possible. So I'm so sorry to overlook you. That's okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Scott. I'm really excited to, to see you guys today. It's a huge number of the participants this academy workshop. Um, my name is Priksapong, but I go by Shane. I'm originally from Thailand. And now I'm speaking to you from Thailand, but I'm going back to Bloomington uh, next month to be a visiting scholar in the Ostrom workshop. I would like to say thank you so much for all of you guys at the Ostrom workshop to accept me as a visiting scholar for the next academic year. And uh, I would like to introduce myself just a little bit. Uh, my background is uh, public administration and my work is uh, focusing on the urban commons uh, such as the beach area or knowledge commons. But for the next, next uh, project, I would like to focus my work on the food commons. And I, I, I think um, the interaction between institutions and collective action is fascinating. I, I, I love that. And I would like to apply the IAD framework in an effectively way to understand uh, the collective action. So uh, uh, nice to meet you, all of you guys, and hope to, hope to have an, an, an opportunities to share the idea and know you guys more. Thank you so much. No, thank you. I look forward to seeing you back in Bloomington soon. Um, and we'll talk more about all these opportunities, everybody, including the Visiting Scholars Program, because again, in the future, that's going to be a great way. If you enjoy this, take the red pill um, to come <laughs> for a longer stint in Bloomington. Um, so it looks like perhaps maybe Emily, if, if you're Castle, if you're on, you can say a quick hello if you care to. And then David, I think you're on as well, perhaps. Hi. Yeah. Um, sorry, I've got my screens all goofy. Can everybody hear me? You're, no, it's perfect, Emily. Okay, Great. yes. Hello. Uh, hi, Lavanya. Hi, Hannah. Hi, uh, Frank, Dan, Mike. Sorry, I know those, these guys personally. Um, but hopefully, listening to all of you guys and your research, I'll get to know most of you um, through this. Or um, I was going to say, too, I'm the librarian at the workshop. So any um, help or suggestions or whatever you need during or after this, please send me emails. Um, all of your research sounds great. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for joining. Hopefully this will be a great experience. Carrie will be here, I think next week. So you all can meet her because as Scott said, she did a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, so thanks for joining and I'll see you over the next six weeks. <laughs> thanks, Emily also our assistant director at the workshop. Um, excellent. So David, please, sir, resident musician and... <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm David, um, coming to you from my beautiful home office uh, in, in beautiful Bloomington. Uh, I am the facilities and technology coordinator, so I'm basically the pilot of this Zoom meeting. Um, that's about all I have to say. I don't <laughs> no, it's it's perfect, Captain. No, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be your pilot. So, it's, but it's it's it, it's it's great to see all these different people from all these different backgrounds and all these different places in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. So, it really have, is. Uh, have a great summer academy. Oh my gosh! No, this is again. This is what I love about. Hey, one Frank. Of the I love about the workshop. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, Frank. Uh, some of these people, and hey, Hannah, that I don't get to see, that I know that I don't get to see. Mike, I see you enough. Right. But, uh, you yeah, know. right. Uh, Dan, 
Dan and I have been talking about synthesizers lately, so. Oh, well done. Uh, anyways, yeah. Excellent. So if anything goes wrong with the meeting, it's uh, it's not my fault. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll just keep passing. No, David, it's great to see you. Thanks again for all of your work and to Emily. Thanks. And like we said, we'll thank Carrie again too for creating all of this for us. Um, so in, in about 15 minutes, everybody, we have our first uh, break. So there'll be a chance to stretch, get coffee, or depending on the time zone, another preferred beverage. Um, then we'll come back and continue the, uh, the or the first day um, orientation from there. But for now, what I'd like to do is first, just offer you a few quick highlights. We'll run through the agenda so you kind of know what to expect over these coming weeks, talk about some of the deliverables, answer any questions you might have uh, from there. Um, and then, you know, we'll take it one step at a time after our break. But that's when some of our new program directors will be joining us as well to talk about some current research initiatives and other opportunities um, to collaborate and hopefully further your own research goals. I realized first, though, that I don't think I introduced myself. Um, I do know a lot of you, but for those I don't know, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Scott Shackelford, so I have the, the privilege of being the director here at the workshop for the last few years. Um, also direct our program on cybersecurity and internet governance, but my own background is eclectic like many of yours. So I started off um, teaching in sustainability law and policy. I did the environmental law clinic in law school, so I was quite interested in similar issues of environmental and natural resource governance. Um, during my own PhD, my, my background for what it's worth, I did a PhD um, well, the name of the department changed while I was in the program. So it became a PhD in politics and international studies. Then I also have a, a JD as well. Um, so I got pretty interested in different global commons governance issues uh, during my own work. And that, that over time, you know, evolved into more of a focus on issues of internet governance and cybersecurity. Um, but that's been more recent. I have to say that um, now it's transitioning more back a little bit again to some other global commons arenas, including space. Um, so we'll be talking a bit more about some of those opportunities if any of you are similarly nerdy and would like to discuss those, uh, some, some of those topics. So consider me, you know, likewise, a facilitator um, and uh, look forward to getting to know many of you better over the course of this, uh, this summer academy here. Um, so our agenda. So let me pull up our Canvas page. So you guys can get a sense for this. I, it looks like pretty much everybody has access at this point. Um, but let me just pause there and just ask, does anybody you know, not have access or have you been experiencing any issues getting on the page? Anything we should know about? Feel free to use you know, chat, whatever you're comfortable with as well, okay? But just, just let us know if there's issues there. Um, not exactly a full bore syllabus, but at least this is an agenda so that you get a sense for, again, kind of what to expect in the coming weeks. I'm sure many of you have taken a look at this already, but hopefully it's a nice chance to answer any questions you might have about kind of what's what's coming up. So as we said, we're just about to take our first break. We'll come back. We'll talk more about um, what to expect from the Ostrom workshop in particular, hear from some more of our current program directors, um, and then just finish off the orientation from there. The fun stuff, though, really begins next week, as you see. Um, with Dan and Mike, um, absolute dynamic duo here talking about the history of the workshop, the Bloomington School, Governing the Commons, Ostrom Design Principles. On that point, um, I think, uh, and again, thanks to Carrie for doing a lot of this, as well as David, I think you all now have um, your, um, uh, at least a way to access the ebook version of Governing the Commons. Um, is that right? I think I'm seeing some nodding. I think we're okay. Has anybody had any issues with that? That's worked okay? Okay, okay, excellent. Because um, that's gonna be, obviously we don't expect you to have read the whole thing you know, by today, et cetera, but it's one of those you know, core texts still that is just so extremely useful, um, for, especially for purposes of the Summer Academy. So please do, now that you have access, uh, if you haven't already had a chance, you know, give that a read. Um, as well as you saw the link for today to Lynn's um, OSHA Memorial Lecture, which is a really fantastic survey of a lot of, at least some of the work streams that you're going to be um, uh, interacting with over the course of this um, of these sessions. But maybe before we turn to week um, week three, uh, Dan, Mike, any other you know reflections or comments from either of you about you know kind of what to expect um, coming up next week? I know you've already been posting you know several useful readings, etc. Yeah, Scott, uh, I can just say a few words. This is Mike. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I've managed to connect Lynn's design principles to 
uh, several of the topics that we covered later, polycentric governance, inter institutional grammar, uh, and uh, of course the IED framework. Uh, and uh, so I think this will be a good kickoff. And uh, I'll encourage you all to, to get up early and, and see Dan's. Uh, Dan's presentations are always have more pictures and more fun uh, facts than, uh, than I do in mine, which are a little more traditional lecture notes kinds of things. But Dan's is a real pleasure. So uh, you've got a, a, a real treat coming up next week. Yeah, I, I want to agree with Mike about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and like Mike, I plan to get my... Um, uh, my specific reading assignments for my 75 minutes uh, up uh, this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, so you should have plenty of time and the, the volume of reading is, is not great for that. There's also, if you, if you want to do it, it's not by no means required. I did a video for the workshop on, um, on the Bloomington School, mm -hmm. uh, which should would also provide some uh, some background and some of that stuff on that video, which is uh, available uh, through the workshops uh, web pages. Um, I'll, I'll repeat some of that stuff, but hopefully get into more detail and uh, ho also hope to uh, to generate some uh, some questions and discussion. So I'm looking forward to it. As as are we, <laughs> Dan and Mike, and, and here's a link to that site that uh, that Dan mentioned that Dan just mentioned. It's also linked in the week one uh, module there. So if you'll see that there's you know pages for each week, and um, but just to make it that much easier, I, I would encourage all of you if you haven't had a chance to look through you know each of these different tabs if you follow that link to teaching the workshop, and especially for next week, absolutely the the Bloomington School um, and the Ocean Design Principles, of course, really really useful to look through, and they have a lot more, you know, background readings. As you'll see, we kind of, um, you know, went uh, went to the core authors for a lot of these videos, and they're they're extremely helpful. And um, and also, it's an opportunity to keep building. So, if you find other resources, readings that you found helpful in understanding these concepts, let us know, um, and we'll be sure to get those added too. Excellent. So that that's going to be next week. Um, week three, as you see, uh, Bill and Edu um, Eduardo Brandizio will be joining us. Um, to talk about uh, institutional grammar, um, as well as interdisciplinarity, IED framework, um, and frankly, different mixed methods as well. Um, I think a lot of you already know, you know, both of these um, uh, senior research fellows of the workshop, uh, at least by reputation, but, you know, if not both, um, I, we can all, uh, you know, attest as, as among the facilitators here, just outstanding, you know, contributors, workshoppers. Um, I think Edu is actually still doing field work right now in the Amazon. So he sends his apologies. <laughs> um, and Bill, of course, being the founding director of the Commons program here at the workshop as well, which you'll be um, hearing more about that Enza Thiesfeld just very kindly, you know, took over as our interim director over this past year while being, you know, president of uh, IASC as well. So that's going to be, you know, a wonderful uh, session. And then, as you can see, we've tried to front load the substance um, as much as possible to give you, you know, at least a high level overview, because I know we're coming from a lot of different starting points here. Uh, but again, uh, there's baked in, you know, throughout opportunities for you to let us know, you know, how these sessions are going, what you'd like more or less of, because as we said, this is a first iteration, it's an experiment, beta test, you pick it. Um, so we want to keep improving um, on this, especially as we go, you know, at a more in-person in intensive format for next year. Um, then, Frank, please, um, in week four, talking about publishing placement, we have, as you can see, several of these getting practical sessions, so we don't just focus on, you know, the substance, but more on, um, frankly, the practicalities um, of how a lot of this works. Are there any additional insights you'd like to provide, Frank, on how you'd like to or, or plan to approach, you know, that week four session? Uh, no, not really. I plan to get practical. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've stumbled into the game of publishing quite unprepared. And there's a lot of things that I had hoped people told me uh, before I stumbled into it. So it would have less of a stumbling character. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can uh, help some of the youngsters out there uh, avoiding some of the mistakes that I have made and, and by helping them to get practical about publishing and also a little bit about placements. That's what I intend to do. Absolutely, Frank. Yeah. 
and you, you can see a lot of nodding. <laughs> we tried to, you know, brainstorm these as, as among, you know, the more front of mind issues for a lot of us, especially starting out, right? So that's going to be a really, really helpful session. So thank you so much, Frank, for leading that for us. And then as you see here, there's also, we'll be introducing these topical breakout rooms, as all of you are aware. So we've tried to group those with similar interests, as you heard, as we did our introductions just a few moments ago. You know, th there are some contingents with at least, you know, broadly similar themes in mind, um, as well as some others. So, and that, that's completely fine. We, we lumped those together as best we could with the different facilitators and mentors. So you're going to have an opportunity. Um, and that week, starting in week four in particular, uh, though, of course, the discussions will start well before then as we go through this material, um, to, it, to have those breakouts, to start talking about your work in more detail, um, starting with these abstracts, right? Um, and you can treat the abstracts basically as an opportunity to, to present, you know, a current project, could be a piece of your dissertation, et cetera, that you think would really benefit um, from the Ostrom traditions and the methodologies that we're talking about throughout the course of the academy. And that's just really a nice jumping off point, because when we open those breakout rooms, when we jump into those topical sessions, the first step is going to be basically talking about each of your abstracts, right? Um, so we'll have those ready for week four. Uh, for week, and you'll be getting feedback, of course, from the facilitators, from the, men, from the mentors as we go through here. And then the idea is just to start to build it out. It's not like you're going to be able to finish up an entire project in these few weeks, but we do want to push you to at least make as much progress as possible. Um, so we'll be asking for, you know, the beginnings of an outline uh, based on the readings from the academy and otherwise, maybe some a useful lit review to get you going on this particular project. Um, and then in week six, there'll be kind of a lightning round of presentations to kind of give us a sense for where you're heading right with this project and there'll be a chance then in the fall to come back to loop back and see you know how the pro how the project has continued to mature and evolve over time so don't feel like in other words at you know june 24th we're done right this is just hopefully the beginning of a long and fruitful relationship with all of you um and the workshop so that's more or less you know what to expect for the coming weeks here so we just have a few minutes before our first uh break let me just pause there and ask if any of you, you know, have any questions? I didn't think we can clarify at this point. Scott? Yes, please, this Mike. Mike, I see mm -hmm. that you, we want a draft of the abstracts by uh, next week, right? By Tuesday's session. Uh, and, and then by week four, there'll be sort of a longer presentation. Mm -hmm. But so I encourage everyone to put together. Uh, I think you already had to do an abstract of some kind as part of your mm -hmm. application. Uh, and so take another look at that and see how that's changed in your mind uh, mm -hmm. so that we can get a better sense of, of uh, uh, the kinds of projects that you're going to do now that you're actually sort of starting. But I don't think we'll get a chance to talk about them at all uh, uh, next week. Uh, uh, and then by week four, we should be able to dig into them uh, a little bit more. So, so get, uh, take another look at your abstracts and uh, update those to, uh, with what you sort of learned so far or how your thoughts have changed over that time. Mm -hmm. Spot on, Mike. No, that's exactly right. Um, it's an evolution, and as we heard from several of the uh, of our colleagues here, you know, your ideas can change, and that that's very welcome. <laughs> so maybe what you initially, you know, came in with, uh, you know, that that topic, or or maybe there's a different rabbit hole you'd like to pursue. That's completely fine. Scott, can I make one other point? while I've got oh, please, Mike, floor here. Uh, I'm I'm one of the mentors. I think we've got six or seven mentors uh, that you've been assigned uh, in groups of four, two or four. Uh, to mentors. Uh, we're here for you to, uh, as your point person, to take advantage of any sort of questions you have. Uh, if you have any questions about people who've uh, done this kind of research uh, in the past, uh, I will say, you know, I'm sure you're all pretty amazed by the spread of the topics and, and the backgrounds uh, of the people involved in this. Uh, to me, it's not so surprising. Uh, Back in Lynn's heyday, when we had 15 students and eight or nine visiting scholars, we would have had a group of about this size, about this diverse uh, uh, in that graduate seminar. Uh, and so I think that's that's very much what we're used to dealing with uh, around here at the workshop. And uh, but this this mentorship, this group of four, uh, two or four students or participants involved with mentors is sort of a new sort of idea. And I think for this kind of setting, that'll be especially important uh, uh, so you don't sort of get lost in the crowd uh, with the other 25 or six participants. So uh, feel free to contact uh, whoever your mentor is 
uh, and um, uh, we'll try to start to uh, reach out and get some communications going, but, but we're here to help you uh, uh, get the best, the most you can out of this uh, experience. Thanks, Scott. No, thank you, Mike. Absolutely. And it looked like, yeah, Srebita, uh, you had a, a question there. And then it looks like, uh, yeah, Anahi, happy to speak to that too. Yeah, I just want to ask, so the groups on Canvas um, that we are seeing, those are the groups um, that, that you just talked about, right? Okay. Yes, yes, I, I believe so, um, Srebita. So in other words, if you have any, you know, if anybody has any questions about, you know, which group, um, you happen to be in or who your mentor is, just let us know if that's unclear. Okay. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Um, and then, yeah, Anahi, good question. So uh, for those who didn't see it in the chat, the question was, you know, should the abstract be, you know, a project proposal? Could it be an article that you'd like to draft? We're quite flexible as far as that goes. Uh, I think, you know, either way is fine. Um, it could be an article abstract. Absolutely. You know, part of the joy of a an initiative like this, hopefully, is also to find an opportunity maybe to, you know, make some new, um, uh, make some new friends, be, start some new interdisciplinary collaborations. And that's one thing that, you know, Edu in particular is going to be talking about. So in other words, you could start with an abstract for an idea for an article that you alone would like to write, but, you know, maybe depending on how some of these discussions go, um, maybe you'll find some new co-authors or sort of new, some new opportunities to collaborate. But if you do have a particular, you know, uh, proposal that you have in mind, a grant you're going for related to your research, um, that kind of thing as well, let us know. Great. Any any other questions? I want to be respectful of our break. Okay. I'll, I'll just suggest this. Let's reflect over the break, okay? If there's any other questions, anything you'd like to clarify, and we'll ask again after we've had a chance, you know, for those on an earlier time zone to get some caffeine or for those otherwise to stretch <laughs> and uh, look forward to seeing you all back in, uh, in 15 minutes. Okay. Excellent. Thanks again, everybody. See you soon. <laughs> but I hope we're able to at least take a quick break. Um, great to see you all. Welcome back. Um, while folks are rejoining, if any of you, you know, thought of a question or something you might like to clarify, you know, during the, the, the break, please feel free you know, toss it out. No problem. I, I saw Frank, thanks for your chat as well. We'll keep working with you on the Canvas issue. <laughs> um, yeah, any, any questions from anybody so far that maybe occurred to you as you were tucking in a child or getting a cup of coffee or, <laughs> yeah, Renata, please. <laughs> Hi Scott, I do have a question. Um, I realized that um, I unfortunately didn't save my abstract the abstract that I applied for the submission um, I wrote it specially for the for this workshop and I wrote it directly on the on the website and I realized that I didn't save it um, and I wanted to take a look at this abstract before I applied the week two before I submit week two abstract and I was wondering do you have, or any of you in the team have to happen the abstract? Uh, would, would it be too much work if I would write someone to ask to take a look, if you could send me the abstract or the, the subscript, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. of course, it's, it's no problem at all. And my guess is there may be at least a few others in a similar boat. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll work that on our side. Um, yeah, and either, either Emily or Carrie, um, or myself can we'll we'll reach back out. No problem at all. <laughs> we have we have a copy. <laughs> I just have to find where it is as well. Okay, I'm so, sorry for the extra work. Thank no, you. not at all. Not at all. No, no, no. Don't don't even think twice about it. I'm just gonna make a note now to follow up before I forget. Um, great, great question. Yeah, any any other questions that maybe came up or anything you'd like to clarify? Um, sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine, Casey. Yeah. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead first, Tripta. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll turn to Casey. No problem. I wanted to ask, so I'm seeing um, Franz Vincent. Um, should we email uh, the abstracts or should we upload it on Canvas? Or how do we circulate? And are we going to share it with everyone in the workshop or just with those in my group? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Great questions. Yeah. 
Um, if you wouldn't mind just uploading it to the assignment tab on Canvas, at least on our end, that just makes it a little bit easier um, so that we don't you know, miss an email or miss an attachment or something. Since as you can tell, there's a number of cooks in the kitchen on some of this. <laughs> and, and then as far as sharing it, it's a good question. Definitely with members of your group, absolutely. Um, how about this? And I'd love to hear you know, Mike, Dan, others thoughts along these lines. Um, I, if, if you have any objection, perhaps, you know, to sharing your abstract more broadly, you know, with the whole, with the whole group here, let us know with the whole academy. Um, otherwise, I, I'm sure there's going to be an easy way to make these available, you know, to all of you uh, to look at as well. Uh, and indeed, as we get to the, you know, the presentations in week six, you know, there'll be a chance to learn more about it then. But like you said, it's nice to see the evolution over these next five weeks. That's my quick reaction anyway, but. And, th and these are good questions because, again, we're making some of this up as we go, right? So, <laughs> so thank you for, for teeing it up and helping us think about it as well. Um, so, Casey, please, yeah. Yeah, so in terms of abstract, do we have any specific, uh, like, work limitations to, like, I mean, you know, in, in usual case, like, uh, conference abstracts should be, like, less than 300 words or something. So do we have any restriction on that? It's a great question, Casey. I, I treat it in similar terms, you know, insofar as trying to, you know, make this something useful that you could actually, you know, go back to and submit to a conference or to a different proposal. So yeah, right around 300 words, I think is a, is a great, you know, benchmark to shoot for. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then Raphael uh, Limby, I saw your question as well. Um, you don't have to, and, and maybe Mike and Dan could chime in on this based on the, you know, the substance and the discussions for week two. Um, you don't have to have read, you know, the entirety of Governing the Commons, you know, by next week. Um, but, you know, starting to make progress, uh, I think, was going to be useful to kind of flesh out some of those discussions, especially around, you know, the design principles, et cetera. But maybe if there is, and, and forgive me, you know, Mike and Danny, if you already, I need to look up that module for week two, if you've already flagged that. But maybe are there particular parts of Governing the Commons that, you know, maybe you'd recommend that they focus on? Uh, Scott, yeah. Um... Read the get, figure out the design principles. That's sort of her major sort of thing. So there's a chapter on the design principles, and I think also the chapter uh, where she sets up what the um, uh, the basic problem is, the basic appropriation and revision problem. Uh, don't get lost in the game models in the first or second chapter because that's not really that critical. Uh, don't get lost in the details of the case studies. Uh, just read enough to sort of get a sense of what's going on. Uh, and I think also in her last chapter, she goes into some stuff on trust and reciprocity that, that we're not going to cover in, in next week's session. So that would be the focus. What was her core problem? What was her core um, uh, solution, her, her, her response, her, her conclusions, which are basically the design principles? Uh, and then we suggested the um, her Nobel Prize speech, too. Uh, in the uh, either the Nobel version or the American Economic Review version, they're basically the same. Uh, there, get a sense of what polycentric governance is. Uh, the um, Nobel Committee did not talk about polycentricity, uh, said that she got the prize for uh, governance in the commons, economic governance, especially the commons. But in Lynn made a special effort to put polycentric governance in the title of her Nobel address because she wanted to emphasize that that's really the bigger theme and that her study of the commons was part of this broader understanding of polycentricity because I want to say a few words about polycentricity and that's the word I think that sort of unifies all the various work that Dan's going to be talking about uh, in his historical overview it's all tied together in this concept of polycentricity and in her Nobel speech, Glenn does a really good job of laying out what she what she means by that. Uh, I don't know if Dan's on and wants to say yeah. anything more. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say for for purposes of, of my presentation, the um, the Nobel speech is more uh, valuable than governing the commons, uh, because in talking about the history Obviously, governing the commons is an important, you know, crucially important part of the, the history of, uh, of the Bloomington School, uh, but the Bloomington School is actually quite a bit uh, broader uh, than, than just what's in governing the commons. And so the Nobel speech uh, pretty much covers, uh, covers all the ground 
And then of course the uh, additional readings that I've assigned uh, in addition to that, uh, basically are to, uh, are to fill in um, um, some gaps because <coughs> while the Nobel speech is pretty much about the whole history uh, of, of her work, um, it's, it doesn't quite capture all aspects uh, of the Bloomington School. Uh, one other thing, Scott, uh, and for the participants, it's, it's kind of useful to talk about the other readings a little bit. Uh, I think I added a chapter uh, in one of the books that Dan and I edited, where I talk about seeing the IED framework in, in application. And I basically use Governing the Commons as a case study uh, for how she used the IED framework to come up with the design principles. That's basically what the going to be the core theme of my presentation. I hope to have the slides up there before too long, too. Uh, but there's a little difference in the way I wrote about it five, seven, eight years ago or so, uh, and the way I put slides together the last couple of weeks. So there'll be some development in there. But but the background, the 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 uh, paper on um, IED and application has its origins in a paper, a smaller, shorter paper that I used to distribute to the students in our uh, graduate seminar on institutional analysis, who were students there were sort of facing, geez, how do I get started on this stuff? You know, and, and I think that part might be useful for many of you too, uh, about how you sort of think about either a research problem that you're trying to, to solve, a research puzzle you're trying to solve, or some sort of policy situation that you would really like to see changed and reformed in some way. Uh, I tried to lay out a structure in how you start with identifying what's the nature of the problem, what are different potential explanations, how do you dig into what are the pieces of those explanations, uh, and then uh, use the ID framework and some other analytical tools to try to parse that out and give you some sort of steps to move forward. And basically in that, in that chapter, I, I basically say that that's what Lynn did to to create governing the commons, to create the design principle. She did that in her head. I mean, it wasn't written explicitly out uh, until I, I put this thing together, but I think it's pretty clear, clearly summarizes or reconstructs at least um, the mode of analysis she went through to try to, to get a conclusion, to get her mind around that situation. And uh, she provides some real uh, important, I think, examples for us to follow and guidelines for us to follow. Uh, so that's the reason why I, you take a look at that at that chapter. But again, don't get lost in some of the details there on that because my my, my thoughts on that have evolved a little bit. But uh, uh, but the the Nobel speech is just wonderful, uh, and so is Governing the Commons. So it's it's a good it's a good place to start. Scott, absolutely, Mike. No, thank you so much, and Dan for those really helpful comments. And just maybe for those couple who might be new to, uh, to Canvas so that you can see where to go, um, this is kind of what the homepage looks like or should look like when you first sign on. And then all you need to do if you haven't discovered it already, just head to modules. And then the readings that Mike and Dan were just discussing are these, okay? So these, these four here. Okay, great. Um, so any, any, other, any other questions? Oh, and Raphael, I just saw your note about the, the Nobel speech. It is, um, it's linked under the week one uh, plan. So if you go to week one, I promise not to keep sharing screens constantly, but I know it's maybe a bit easier. Um, but if you, if you check out readings here, here's a link to it, um, along with the link to, of course, you know, governing the commons as well. Okay, awesome. Um, any, any other questions, guys? This is all really, really helpful. Excellent. Okay. Hey, we, we've had some new colleagues join us as well um, since the first session after that break. So maybe we'll just do a few quick introductions uh, for them to give them a chance to say to say hello. And then we'll finish up with the rest of our orientation, which is going to be basically introducing all of you to a little bit about, you know, the workshop of today. And I'd, I'd uh, welcome any remarks from, uh, from Mike and Dan and others about the, you know, the history of the workshop, which is going to be more of a focus, of course, next week, but any, you know, preliminary thoughts along those lines as we approach our 50-year anniversary next year um, are most welcome. 
So it looks like up on my screen anyway, uh, Jess, I see first, and then um, and then Angie. Um, so Professor Jess Steinberg, please, <laughs> if you'd like to Hi. say. <laughs> I, is this a formal introduction of the program or just myself and who I am? For, for now, yeah, Jess, just, just the latter, exactly. Okay, yep, okay yep. great. Um, hi, everybody, welcome. I'm Jess Steinberg. I am an associate professor in um, international studies here at Indiana University and also a, a director of the Environment and Natural Resource Governance Program at the Austin Workshop here on Indiana University's campus. So it's nice to see you all, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that program when we get to that part of the orientation, but nice to meet you. Great to see you, Jess, and thanks for joining. Um, and Angie, Professor Angie Raymond, please. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Angie Raymond. As Professor Shackelford said, I'm. You can call me Angie, by the way. Um, and I am. My primary appointment is at the Kelly School of Business. I'm also at uh, the Maurer School of Law. And then, of course, as you've heard, I'm the director of data management and information at the Ostrom Workshop. And welcome you all. Thanks a lot, Angie. Really great to see you. Um, and then um, uh, Eaton uh, Tepper, Dr. Eaton Tepper, if you'd like to say a quick hello as well. Uh, currently a, um, a, a postdoc with us who's le he's leading all of our space governance work, which has been really fun. It's it's taken off, pun intended. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, hello, uh, I'm Eitan. And uh, uh, um, as mentioned, uh, uh, I'm uh, leading uh, all all the space governance work. Uh, basically, we uh, we are looking into uh, the rules that uh, apply uh, in outer space and to outer space uh, activities, uh, how they are made, and more generally about space governance. Um, and we have uh, several uh, activities that you can see also on the website of the Ostrom Workshop. Absolutely. And thanks a lot. And we'll we'll turn more to the for anybody interested, uh, we'll turn more to a few more um, events coming up, including a, a pretty, I think, exciting um, space and um, cyber workshop uh, next month. Actually, I think it even overlaps with this academy it's just earlier in that last week. So excellent. Well, again, thank you all for taking the time. What we'd like to do now is just again to provide a really quick 30,000 foot introduction, overview of the Oystrom Workshop, because that might generate some additional questions. Uh, we'll hear more about some of the specific programs, including the ones that Angie um, and Jess um, and Eden are responsible for. And just take it one step at a time. Again, this the, the meaning of this is to have a discussion uh, rather than just hear us talk about all this stuff. So we'll pause throughout, but feel free to interject at any point with questions, comments, you know, anything that might be on your minds. Um, and I will say just at the outset, one thing we're really excited about and our hope for this uh, for the Summer Academy is just another opportunity and avenue to deepen ties, frankly, um, with ISC and the Early Career Network with all of you. Um, as, as Mike and Dan mentioned, we've been running this seminar for a long time now. Um, for you know everybody, for the visiting scholars, for folks who are in Bloomington, for the Ostrom Fellows like Jamie that have taken. But the goal of this particular academy is to, frankly, open the doors, in this case, virtual doors, to engage with, frankly, the next generation of commoners around the world, all of you. Um, so that's what we're hoping to do with this. Again, you can let us know how it's working, how we can improve it in future iterations. But we're so excited um, to partner with all of you, and as I said, with ECN uh, in this endeavor. Okay, uh, we can by no means can we summarize, you know, the 50 year history of the workshop um, in even if we had 50 minutes just to focus on this, you will be hearing more about for sure the Bloomington School, some more thoughts um, about the workshop, uh, then and now as it were in the weeks ahead. But as I mentioned, in uh, 1973, the workshop was founded, purposely named a workshop, we should say, because in particular, there weren't, and I'm sure Mike maybe has some thoughts along these lines in particular, um, there, were, there weren't rules around workshops in the way that there were research centers. <laughs> so this was an early, an early effort to kind of get around some university and administrative red tape. Uh, but in part, you know, the workshop was founded because of you know some you know some resistance to the type of research that Lynn and Vincent um, you know were doing then um, that was empirically grounded that was applied uh, that wasn't necessarily as much in the mainstream of, of political science as it was practiced in the department of the time. Um, so this was an opportunity to develop this interdisciplinary melting pot that's grown through a lot of iterations um, over the years. 
But I'm wondering, you know, Mike uh, and Dan, any any other, you know, quick reflections or thoughts looking back, you know, 50 years ago on, on, on uh, you know, why the workshop was created in the first place or anything else you might like to add before we kind of focus more on the workshop of today? Uh, Scott, I did, would like to just say that um, they really saw themselves as craftsmen and and uh, uh, in a uh, uh, mentor relationship of um, uh, uh, you know a master craftsman working with uh, apprentices and and so they really saw the workshop sort of in that sense. The thing about you know breaking the rules or or not having rules to sort of break, you know, is true too. But but it really was the sense that they Lynn and Vincent did some work in woodworking and and then building their own house and in doing furniture and stuff. And they really saw um, research and academic work in much the same way of of building with sort of the, the material you've got and, and making the best most the best artistic sort of product you can out of it. Uh, and as, as Scott said, boy, that didn't fit with the, uh, the mindset of academic um, universities back in the 70s and, and still doesn't quite fit um, in, in many cases. It kind of fits around here because it's kind of worked for us. Uh, but it, it's really been a very multidisciplinary approach from the very beginning, long before um, all the other universities sort of started going to do interdisciplinary projects. Uh, Lynn and Vincent were doing it back in the mid '70s, uh, and so uh, uh, the the working group is, I think, working workshop and working group are very important concepts there. And Dan, I think, will give you a much better, much broader sort of overview of of the kinds of stuff that they did. Uh, over those decades. Yeah, I, that's, uh, I'm gonna repeat some of this next week in, in the context of providing the, the broader history. Uh, but as Mike said, the idea of a workshop was like any kind of actual workshop outside of academia, like a firm. And it's all about artisanship, right? crafting research, and mentoring. Uh, so the idea was that the senior scholars in the workshop would mentor junior scholars and everyone else, you know, sort of on the ladder. Uh, the junior scholars would also mentor postdocs and PhD students and everybody, but but not in a hierarchical way. It's it's it was always a very horizontal notion of, of governance, sort of in keeping with notions of polycentricity. And uh, boy, so for example, if, if you wanted to get on the wrong side of Vincent or Lynn, uh, you just start criticizing some of the staff members <laughs> in the workshop and, and you'd hear from, from Vincent or Lynn about, about that, right? This, the staff, right? So, you know, Emily and David who are helping this, they're not considered just employees of the workshop, which is how IU tends to look at them. They're partners uh, with the rest of us in, in crafting uh, ideas and research and, and uh, you know, the whole idea that no single discipline with its own, with its tools and theories is capable of resolving any kind of complex problem in the world. You need lots of different scholars from different disciplines with various tools, yeah, even to wrap your head around uh, a lot of the collective action problems we face. And so uh, everything was structured, as we'll see next week, everything in the workshop was structured in a, in a deliberate way, right? There was an idea behind everything, uh, as we'll see. And, and by the way, I mentioned Vincent. Vincent's often uh, not known to, to people outside the workshop. And yet he, the partnership he and Lynn had was, was complete. Um, she, she was perhaps in a sense, the more brilliant scholar. He was the political theorist uh, in the family. And uh, we'll see next week, his role uh, in the workshop was every bit as important as, as Lynn's. Spot on, Dan. No, re really well said. Thank you so much to you both. Yeah, a relationship built on contestation. <laughs> um, 
And, and, and such a good point. Thank you for mentioning that aspect of um, the workshop built on, you know, craftsmanship, which is, which is it, which is it. We're not going to solve any of these global collective action problems on our own. We have to leverage all these different disciplines in order to be able to tackle it. And inspired as it was, as Jamie can attest um, from actual woodworking and, uh, and artistic endeavors, that's, that, that's, again, I think such a, such a thing that makes the workshop uh, unique. And also, I think raises it to a you know a higher plane in some ways, um, which I've I've always found really invigorating and inspiring. Um, so thank you, and and you'll be hearing more about you know all the work from you know municipal governance, from police studies, you know climate, environmental commons, etc. As we see, it's being applied in all different types of contexts, but with some common methodological threads um, and ideas that we're going to be weaving throughout. Um, and as, as Dan and Mike uh, said, th there's been a lot of ways in which the workshop itself, you know, has been organized over the years. It, needless to say, because of just frankly how incredibly, you know, robust um, and, uh, and energetic Lynn um, and Vincent, you know, where a lot of this has been driven in large part by their own work. Um, unfortunately, after their um, after their passing, you know, there, there's been a variety of different, you know, attempts to not fill their shoes because certainly nobody could. Um, but to think about some other ways in which we can continue to, you know, carry on the, the main torch um, in terms of how some of these ideas are being developed, the concepts, the, the, the methodological tools, um, as well as, you know, expanded into new frontiers. So that's what you see up here. Basically, these days, everybody, you know, we, we still have working groups. As you see there, there's just a couple of the more than 20 working groups that are still active. Um, you'll be hearing about, you know, more of them as we go. And, you know, Dan and Mike, among others, and Bill, Edu, I've all been involved in, in these as well. Um, you know, polycentricity alone is a massive working group with, I correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, but I think it's still 200 plus, you know, members alone. <laughs> Uh, which is fantastic, right? I mean, it's also, you know, that's also a challenge, of course, but it's, it's great and just shows, you know, the global reach and breadth of these different groups. Some, um, as Eaton will tell us more about, um, uh, like in space governance, a little bit more manageable, but still, you know, quite diverse for, for space governance. I think it's over 60 um, and, you know, wide variety of scholars, practitioners. Several of these working groups have co-sponsored events, including with IESC. Like, for example, there's the next uh, Space Commons Conference coming up this fall. Um, and I see you might have, I'm sure many of you have been involved with several of these. They hosted a variety of these virtual conferences during the pandemic on a number of fronts. We just did one of the food commons with our sustainable food systems group led by James Farmer. You know, for example, just a few months ago that Enza Thiesfeld, our commons program director, also helped with. Um, I've been mentioning the programs. And as you heard from Jess and Angie, you know, we do have a number of these permanent programs as well. Um, and the idea be behind the programs is that, you know, these are some of the core pillars um, that we'd like to continue to carry forward, some historic and some we think, frankly, just strategic in terms of new frontiers and areas that are ripe for exploration with, with these tools, with these concepts that, we've, that we'll, you'll be learning more about, um, including Jess's, as we just mentioned, recently expanded to encompass environmental natural resource governance, which many of you uh, are interested in, which is great. Commons governance, of course. Um, itself. Think, think of these because clearly there's areas of overlap between them, which again, as Dan said, quite purposeful. Think of these as, as, kind, of, as kind of a Venn diagram, right, where in terms of that there are certainly areas in which, um, you know, commons, for example, overlaps with all of these, in fact, subsumes them in some ways, right? But there are also opportunities to come at these issue areas from different vantage points, from different traditions, which hopefully can generate some more innovative and exciting solutions. So commons governance, we're in the process right now of hiring, fingers crossed, a permanent director for the commons program. Um, we're not quite across the finish line yet. We're close. So hopefully by the end of this program, I'll be able to make, you know, more of a formal announcement there. Uh, but, you know, to be to be continued there. Um, I'll, we'll say a little bit more about the cyber program. Angie will tell us more about data governance. A lot going on there, including a new data salon series. Um, Professor Gustavo Torrens from Econ heads up the political economy program as well. Um, and then, like we said, a number of initiatives, including sustainable food systems, um, space, a lot of conferences coming up, a lot of special events. 
all of you, um, eat wherever you are around the world, you're, just know that you're always invited every Monday and Wednesday um, at noon Eastern to participate in our colloquium and research series. The colloquium series was one of the original things that Lyndon Vincent wanted to start almost 50 years ago and has been going now for nearly half a century. And that's designed to highlight you know, more senior scholars um, talking about works in progress, digging in, critiquing them, Whereas the research series is an opportunity for um, more up and coming scholars, visiting scholars as well, like yourselves, um, to talk about their own work. And more recently, we've also added a few additional components like an Ostrom book club. Um, so recent books that have come out related you know, to the Ostroms and their work get featured there. We also invite working groups to offer reports and updates. Um, about their, their own work. And um, so and anyway, there's opportunities there to dig in every week uh, once the term starts. And then there's a lot of special events that we have in the offing, including as we look ahead to the 50th and the next workshop on the workshop or WOW 7, which is being chaired um, by Professor Eduardo uh, Brandizio, who you're gonna be hearing from in just a few weeks. And then in terms of other opportunities for all of you, if you're not already you know, signed up as an affiliate of the Ostrom Workshop, very much encourage you to do that. Quite an easy process to begin. Um, and frankly, it's just a matter of checking some boxes to make sure that you get on the list serves that you're most interested in in terms of the working groups, et cetera. Um, there are opportunities that we'll tell you more about to be to come again to Bloomington as visiting scholars. That's a it's a great opportunity either for a short period of time or a longer period of time. You get paired, you know, with a with a mentor, with a facilitator to make sure it's a meaningful, impactful experience. Um, and then there's a, a number of other um, opportunities there too that we can talk about. Um, Emily, as, as, as she mentioned, is our librarian, curates a number of really unique resources. Some of these you might be familiar with, some of these you might not be. Um, again, the slides are up on module one there, so feel free to follow these at your leisure. But they include you know, the Digital Library of the Commons uh, with north of 10,000 entries alone, really useful tool for researching a variety of commons related topics. Um, the Living Bi Bibliography, I think, has been a really useful resource that continues to be updated. Um, a lot of these newer databases, including Polycentricity, is done in collaboration with, with Castle, uh, with a number of other institutions, which has been great to see. Um, because, you know, frankly, the field has become increasingly polycentric, which is it's baked into the DNA, right? So we consider the workshop to be an important node um, in this broader ecosystem, but we, we don't pretend, nor do we want to be, you know, the only game in town. But those are some useful resources um, that hopefully can help could contribute to your uh, to your research. A few other things that might be useful for you all. Um, we do run a regular podcast series called the Governance Roundtable of the Ostrom Workshop, the Grow Podcast, and we'd love to feature you um, and your work in this series. So if you're interested in participating, um, just reach out. You can reach out to me uh, directly. That might be the easiest right now. I'll put my email address to make it that much easier in the chat. Doesn't have to, you can do it at any point. It's a nice opportunity to have a have a conversation. Um, it can be a useful way for the community overall, you know, to learn more about your work, um, et cetera. That's been fun. We featured a variety of different kind of um, you know mini streams within this broader podcast, including a recent one on um, on operas and sustainability, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, visiting scholars, we mentioned there, there is funding available for visiting scholars so we can pay your, uh, your travel expenses, housing expenses while you're in Bloomington. Um, mentioned some of these others already. There are various grant opportunities that we can help with. Um, you'll be hearing more about that from our grants coordinator, Brendan Devine, as part of our Getting Practical series here in a few weeks. We mentioned the working groups. One thing I didn't mention about the working groups is um, the list that you see there, one, of course, as you can tell, that's not comprehensive, but, but two, it's, they're always in flux. We don't pretend to have all of these working groups needing, frankly, to exist forever or in their current form. So if, if you feel like there's an intersection um, or a topical area that, that's not being served, you know, there's a number of you interested in it. One thing that the workshop is pretty good at, it, frankly, is being an interdisciplinary facilitator. Um, so reach out to us. Um, we don't ask for a lot. Basically, hey, what about a paragraph or two of the, the field, something like water governance, which, um, you know, we have, you know, a variety of researchers working on, but not a dedicated working group yet. We've been talking about it for the last few months. That could be a low-hanging fruit opportunity. We'd like to do this. Start with, 
you know, basically a round table to gather the kind of some core folks who are interested. And we blast it out to the listservs and whoever shows up, shows up and you can take it from there. Some of these are formed with a particular, you know, grant opportunity with an issue in mind. Maybe they're prepping some uh, work for an upcoming conference, et cetera. Others are just exploratory, kind of a mini version of the research series. Um, and that's completely fine. So we're happy to help with that. Again, they come, they go, but as Mike and Dan mentioned, these are you know baked into the DNA of the workshop, so we do everything we can to support them, okay? Um, so I know this has already been a fire hose just in that last uh, little bit of time. Let me pause there for a second and just ask if there's any questions so far or anything I can clarify. And that is the library upstairs <laughs> in one of our buildings at the workshop, though I think that was before the renovation. So we might need to update some of the pictures there. We are finally working with our curatorship program um, here at IU to update the index of all the artifacts from the Ostroms uh, that, that were gifted and gathered from around the world. Um, one of our museums, the Mathers Museum has a great collection, but looking ahead to the 50th, we're working to update it um, to also create these informational placards so that when you do come to Bloomington in the workshop, you'll, you'll be able to learn more about all of these um, outstanding artifacts. Okay. And then in terms of governance for the workshop today, again, we'll just kind of breeze through this, but just so that you're aware, we do have an advisory board um, composed mostly of folks at IU, but not exclusively. And you see the membership there. The idea, uh, the idea behind it was to create, you know, frankly, a pretty broad cross section of both schools that have deep ties historically with the workshop, as well as some of those in which we'd like to frankly deepen ties. Um, and then there's also um, Abby York right now is, is serving as our um, uh, a member of the WAC, um, the w Workshop Advisory Council that helps to um, you know, fulfill the needs for all of our external affiliates to be a sounding board for them. And then we have our board of advisors um, and this has gone through some iterations as well, but as you see today, it's made up of senior scholars um, as well as um, some practitioners and frankly, potential funders. Um, it's always nice to have at least one billionaire like Craig Newmark <laughs> involved in the group who's been doing a lot to fund you know, some of this related work, um, as well as a few, you know, a few from the private sector like the content moderation board, et cetera. Great. Um, and then, you know, one thing you'll be hearing more about throughout the uh, throughout the academy and throughout the series are, again, all these events, all these ways in which you can contribute. We have be, in part in part because of the pandemic, um, you know, all of this has been streamed for some time, but this has made us, you know, frankly, that much easier to do it. So all the colloq, all the research series, um, the Tocqueville program, you know, run by Professor Ariel and Krayutu, you know, coming back. All of that um, is going to be available online. You can just go to the Oystrom page, click on the Zoom room that David's kindly setting up for us, and you're good to go. Um, and you know, in any given year, the numbers vary. Because of the pandemic, for example, we had very few visiting scholars this last year. Coming up this next year, though, because of the backlog in part, we have uh, more than 20 coming, um, which is great to see. So again, there's an opportunity there to come. I, I hate to say what the average length of stay is, uh, but you know. It, it's, it's nice to stay longer than a few weeks if you can, particularly if you're still just getting versed in this. And if you come in the fall, you know, for example, um, with, uh, you know, for example, this fall, Professor Dan Cole teaching the seminar series, it's a great time to actually be in the class learning about this stuff with other visiting scholars, with other doctoral students. Um, so consider that timing as well. Excellent. And then just to, to, to get you, you know, just a little bit a better understanding of kind of where some of our uh, funding flows, I, I will say that, you know, the workshop is in a very fortunate position, thanks in large part to the amazing generosity of Lynn um, and Vincent, who gifted um, their estates uh, to IU and, and to the workshop. So our, our endowment um, is frankly, thanks to them, as well as thanks to, you know, the work, of course, of a lot of our, um, you know, senior research fellows giving back over the years. Um, but, you know, where does that money go? Um, well, the good news is uh, we don't need that much from IU these days, frankly, to be self-sustaining, which is great. We're actually not that far from it. But we do still fund, of course, you know, research awards, Ostrom fellowships. Not all the Ostrom fellowships come from the workshop itself. Other schools contribute too. There's seed funding opportunities if there's an idea to get a grant going, you know, in partnership with one of us. Great. Let's think about that. There's visiting scholars. We have various other fellowship programs that we run. As you see, there's one from NSF called CyberCore that's run through the workshop as well. So that's where some of the money goes. Um, 
And then a lot of grants. We'll talk more about grants um, over uh, when we get to that in just a few weeks. I know some of you are different stages of grant making. Um, and there's a lot of us at the workshop also at various stages in terms of being senior personnel, leading some of these initiatives. So happy to talk to you more about that. Because as you know, for those of you who have maybe dipped a toe in, it's a whole, it's, it's a very deep ocean <laughs> and it's easy, it's easy to sink. So we want to do everything we can to make sure that you swim. If you're like me, that took a while. <laughs> Um, and then the good news is, you know, the workshop is also getting getting out there more and more um, in the news, um, which is wonderful to see. We made a we made a point um, of working with uh, a variety of our folks here at IU and more broadly to make sure that the research that's being done is actually, you know, being uh, being digested to a more popular audience. Um, so. Anything that you do as well, we'd love to hear about. We have a bi-weekly polycentric circles newsletter that David kindly curates for us. So if you have a new publication, a new conference presentation, something else coming up that you'd like to highlight, just let us know. We'll be sure to include that in the newsletter. Um, and similarly, there's, there's th these opportunities to hopefully, you know, also repackage some of this, uh, 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 some of these findings, some of this information for popular audiences, which is, you know, it's, it's part of the name of the game, particularly, as you know, when you're starting out. And in terms of new initiatives, there's a lot, including what you're doing right now. So thanks for being one of our new initiatives in terms of the Summer Academy itself. Um, as we said, none of this is written in stone in terms of how we're approaching it this summer. Um, I think there's a lot of benefits, and this is one thing we wrestled with a lot, frankly, of having that, you know, intensive one week format, and we talked about having a potential add on, you know, for example, for a few days to basically be an incubator for some small groups to work, you know, quite um, intensively on a project that, you know, could be a could be a proposal could be an article that we can help, you know, facilitate and mentor as well. So, in other words, we'd love to hear your thoughts as we go through this on how you have felt like the virtual format worked, how that could be improved. And also, you know, what we'd like to see in terms of this, you know, one week in residence, if we do go down that road uh, for next year, because as you know, there's benefits and drawbacks, right? One wonderful thing about this is we're all joining from around the world unfortunately with some terrible time zones, but it does make it much more possible. Um, whereas if it's in person, that could be more challenging, even if some funding you know, is provided there. So anyway, so we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. We will be doing more with these global gateways, especially looking ahead to the 50th. Um, there's other you know, works um, in, in process to help commemorate that, um, including a lot of outreach to different uh, groups, municipal, uh, municipal governance, uh, as well as um, teachers to help kind of, again, not only train the next generation in terms of higher ed, but also get some of these ideas more in primary school classrooms. And that's frankly the idea of what you see on the right side of the screen. So Emily Castle um, and I co-authored this with a lot of help and insights from a number of the folks that you see on, on the call, frankly, in terms of our senior research fellows and otherwise. This is a new book about Lynn's life, Lynn's journey coming out with IU Press um, next year, um, obviously, for a younger audience, so we, we tried to um, have this targeted at primary, primarily right around you know nine, ten year olds, um, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to, to dig into. We'll be putting together um, some different lesson plans uh, as part of civics lessons, Earth Day lessons, um, and we're also doing a number of other children's books um, in this same theme, including exploring various aspects of the commons. The next one's going to be about the space commons, just because again. I'm kind of nerdy and that's kind of fun, but we would love to have other ones on, you know, issues of climate justice, on knowledge commons, et cetera. So if any of you are interested um, in helping with the book series, this new part, this first one was, was with IU Press. Um, the next one and probably next couple are going to be with the press in India, uh, Pratham uh, Publishers. And the idea is they're going to be made available in multiple languages for free through this online platform called Story Weaver, though there's also going to be um, you know, limited print runs as well. So that's been a lot of fun to work on. OK, um, excellent. Oh, and I just saw the, the question about where, we, where can we get the book. Not out quite yet, which I'm sorry about, but it is in the production phase finally. And it looks like, Emily might remember, but it looks like the publication date is going to be next, uh, next March by the time it's all said and done. Um, but if you come to the next, you know, wow, et cetera, don't worry, there'll be a lot of ways to get um, to get copies. OK, so let me just pause there and see if there's any questions so far before we pivot and turn to uh, the programs. Scott, I wanted to offer something really please, quickly. Please. That'd be yes. Great. Yeah, no. So this reference to the IAD class, um, 
that Dan Cole is going to be teaching this fall that keeps coming up. And I just want to make sure everybody knew that because that is also a hybrid class now that people do participate from all over the world. So that is an option also. Like if you like this summer workshop is a taste of, of what's in that class and it's extremely rich. Like you learn something every time you take it. Mm -hmm. It's a really good point, Jamie. Absolutely. Um, and as Mike said, really nice um, illustrations <laughs> that Dan's able to provide as well. Um, and uh, we have had virtual visiting scholars, especially during the pandemic. So that could be another opportunity if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, it looks like Renata and then Sridipta, please. Oh yes, thank you, Scott. I was just wondering when we are mentioning um, uh, visiting scholars and um, so for example, scholars who are in the late phase of a PhD, uh, what, how does it actually look like? Um, what is the output of a PhD? A student, or uh, when he when when she goes or he goes to to the workshop, uh, what is the ideal time, and what is it that uh, actually the the students uh, do that with the workshop, and yeah, how does it look like actually? Oh, absolutely, and I have to say it does, and I'd love to hear you know uh, Mike Dan's anybody's thoughts on this as well. Of course, my. My, my quick reaction is it does, I, this is my lawyer hat, right? It does depend, you know, quite a bit on, on where you're coming from on the stage of your career, as you said, Renato, if you're finishing up your PhD, I think the, the issue would be to work with your, you know, work with your supervisor. If there is a, um, you know, one of us or somebody else at, you know, at IU who you'd like to work with, you know, in a more intensive manner for a, for a period of time. Um, and maybe it coincides with, you know, one of these events that we have coming up, uh, including the class, you know, all the better. And in terms of the deliverable itself, you know, it could be, you know, part, you know, part of your dissertation that's, as you're exploring here, related to, you know, the Ostroms um, and the workshop, right, and having a chance to really, you know, dig in, to network, to better understand maybe one, one issue that you're struggling with, etc. Um, it's not like we necessarily need to have a paper, you know, come out of that you know, experience if it's, it's, if it's for a few weeks, we do ask for a reflection at the end of it. And there does need to be a case made up front, including basically you work with a, a kind of a mentor, a facilitator, maybe one of us, maybe somebody else, another workshopper here at IU um, to make sure that it's a, that, that you're supported, that there's a good fit, you know, intellectually um, and that you can, you know, go forth from there. So uh, for something like this, this is a great starting point. And, you know, if, if you don't already have somebody in mind, like your assigned mentor or otherwise, then we can, you know, we can brainstorm, perhaps find somebody else. And then if you'd like to come, it's just a matter of, you know, working through the dates. I will say that, you know, usually this election process plays out in, in March each year uh, or thereabouts. So, you know, those 20 visiting scholars, we're still working on the dates for some of them, but they're locked in for this coming academic year. Um, so it kind of depends as well on, on the flexibility that you might have and when you'd like to come. Um, but again, just reach out uh, for any of you, because this might be the first time that a lot of you are even hearing about this opportunity. Let us know, you know, if it's virtual as well, you know, it's not, as you, as you know, you miss out on some of those, as Hannah can relate and other recent visiting scholars, you miss out on some of those experiences and conversations, um, but still it's better than nothing. So reach out is the short answer. Um, but yeah, Dan and Mike, anything else you'd like to add to in terms of outcomes from visiting scholars or, or anybody else, Angie, Jess. Okay. Or and Hana, you know, feel free to chime in, including, you know, <laughs> chat or otherwise, as, as, as since you were a recent visiting scholar just a few, uh, just a few weeks ago, it seems like now. Um, yeah. So, so if I may please just oh, yeah. add to that, I can really recommend to everyone. <laughs> and I would say, I was really hesitating for long and feeling that maybe it's you know, still not the right time. I am still not experienced enough, but it really helped me. It was a crucial turning point for, for my research. And if you hesitate, stop, just go for it and really take what Scott says, um, just, you know, as it is. So it's a really honest invitation, if I may say so, Scott. Oh, uh, that is how I felt it, and I, I would really, I would really recommend it to everyone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Hannah. Yeah, but again, no, no pressure. <laughs> Only if it makes sense from kind of where you are, and it can, it can be down the road as well, right? We're not talking about this has to happen in the next year or two. Um, yeah, Casey, please. Yes, I have a question about new initiative stuff. That's very fascinating, and my question is. 
So I have I have published some papers and also um, there is a, a one book chapter coming from Oxford and uh, Oxford University Press AI governance and then they are not really talking about um, um, AI IAD framework or uh, Ostrom like institutional analysis stuff but there are increasing require increasing um, sort of needs to understand the bigger picture problem, like uh, the nature of human behavior, they are talking like how human beings and uh, AI systems can, can have some mutual impact in terms of cognitive uh, influences, but there is no really specific framework to understand that. So my question is, my sort of initiative, there are some initiatives that I'm thinking of uh, independently, also working with other uh, professors, but they are, they probably not, my, might not be really uh, substantially related to uh, inst institution, institutional analysis framework that we are covering here. So mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if some some of this sort of interesting initiatives might not be really substantially related to the, the framework that you're covering here. Is that st still applicable to sort of um, suggest or uh, asking your, your opinion on um, thinking there's initiatives for this uh, platform? Yeah, it's a great question, Casey. And um, a, as you'll see, I mean, there's only so much that we can do in a, in a couple of weeks, you know, online, especially in this kind of more condensed format. And I, I'm sure as Dan can maybe back me up here, even if you have a whole semester, there's so much here. <laughs> like In some ways, you're able to just kind of scratch the surface on so many of these um, issues and frameworks. I'll, I'll just give my quick reaction. And again, I'd love to hear others' thoughts as well. Um, that I, you know, one of the main points of this is just as an introduction and uh, to kind of mm. show you a bit of the playing field, Casey, and then mm. there's going to be a lot of other, um, you know, as you say, uh, you know, frameworks, methodological tools, et cetera, that are going to be useful. And in your case, mm. you know, it could be more, you know, governing knowledge commons. It could be some more stuff on, uh, polycentricity. It could be, it, it, it very well at the end of the day might be none of the above, but the point is to explore, right. And just kind of see what mm. might, uh, what might, um, you know, fit. And my last note is, I think I think maybe we're working together on this. I'll double check, but we, okay. we've re recently done a few things on AI governance, um, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. looking at national AI strategies. We did a thing on governing AI, looking at how, in this case, the EU and mm -hmm. uh, China and the US are regulating autonomous vehicles, and we've tried yes. to overlay some of these tools. So. Mm -hmm. I, I have struggled similarly, <laughs> in uh, other words. Okay. So we will struggle together, um, <laughs> and, uh, and I look forward to it. But yeah, Mike, please. <laughs> yeah, I just want to follow in on that. I think, I think Casey actually ended up in my uh, uh, mentoring group, uh, uh, and I thought I'd use this as an example of sort of the kind of services uh, we mentors can provide. Um, you're right that there are people working in this area. I've heard this phrase uh, AI human interactions mm -hmm. uh, uh, in listening to presentations from some of our yeah. colleagues over in what I think is now called the School of Informatics, Computer, Computing and Engineering. I'm sort of mm. not sure it's, it keeps changing its name uh, that are not directly connected to the workshop. And I think Scott's worked with some of the folks over there. Uh, and uh, so part of what I will be doing is sort of trying to find if there are people over in that school that you might want to hook up with uh, and see what they're doing. Now, I think you're right that they're not probably not going to be working with anything close to the workshop because otherwise they would already be over here and be someone who's been sort of hanging around. But this happens a lot. You know, we make connections to people in other departments uh, that, um, um, you know, we didn't really expect it. And uh, 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 there could be connections that sort of grow that way. And in fact, that's the way some of the interdisciplinary programs have started this way. I remember uh, many, a couple of decades ago, Lynn started getting involved with a, uh, or started doing some, hearing some presentations and, mm -hmm. and having some conversations. I think even on the limo back and forth to our airport, which is about an hour away, uh, mm -hmm. with an anthropologist. And so uh, the two of them put together a, an NSF proposal for the uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, SIPAC program uh, that is still going on in various sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a lot can happen in sort of here at IU to sort of make mm -hmm. some connections among different people that, that comes from the students as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, I think in that particular case, those two faculty members were brought together by a student who was on a committee 
uh, the, both of those faculty members were on her committee, uh, and so she made the connection somehow. Uh, and so um, uh, we can sort of do something like that uh, mm -hmm. through this um, a remote kind of thing and make those kinds of connections. So I'm pretty sure there's some people over there that would be uh, of interest in, in, in working with, uh, with you or, or could point you in certain directions. Yes, uh, for definitely. that kind of research, and it does sound like Scott's interested too. So, uh, yeah, that's that sounds really great, and I'm also really amazed that at that really book, big, like uh, stream here. I'm I'm sorry, I'm, my brain's not working. I'm 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 in Las uh, Las Vegas at this point, so this is really early morning. Good luck. My brain's not really working. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, get good and woke up before you go back down on the tables. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> We, we won't ask for a cut. Um, uh, <laughs> we won't? <laughs> well, maybe we should, that's right. Um, so yeah, sorry, Dan, please. Yeah, I just wanted to add that, um, you know, when you're done with the Summer Academy, you'll almost be what we call workshoppers. And there's a vast network of workshoppers around the world pretty much every continent, lots of islands, right? I think no one in Antarctica yet, uh, as far as we know. And the Arctic. We do have the Arctic. We do have the Arctic, but not Antarctica, right? <laughs> yeah, Gunnellen, I think, right, is up in the Arctic. <laughs> uh, so, and they also, uh, you know, to the, to the extent they're serious workshoppers, they also take mentoring very seriously, right? And so I can go almost anywhere in the world now and I'll, I'll know someone <laughs> who, who will identify me as a fellow workshopper and, you know, um, and that means, and they all work on all kinds of different issues around the world, some including issues that aren't really all that related to workshop, but they've got all the tools that they use from the workshop as well. So you might have an opportunity to network uh, with them as well, not just IU faculty who are affiliated with the workshop or uh, even not affiliated with the workshop. And um, uh, several, you know, we don't, I don't think any of us knows all of the workshoppers around the world, but we all know a number of very active workshoppers and we might be able to make connections with some of them for you if it seems relevant to your work. Oh, that sounds just great. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're, we're, we're turning into like Rotary, right? No matter where you go, there's a club. <laughs> um, lovely. And I saw a few other questions. I think hopefully, um, Amina, that maybe answers a little bit more about the mentorship tool. But as, as Mike was laying out, I mean, the goal is, you know, basically to be that connection point, right? Um, to, be, to, be a, to be a mentor. And that mentorship, you know, won't stop just because it's the end of June. Um, and then there was a good question from uh, Vishen as well about, oh, yeah. So, so the programs that we're going to turn to in just a moment to hear more from, you know, Jess and Angie um, are... You know, basically, these are faculty um, that have designated a, a significant portion of their time to leading these research efforts. And sometimes, you know, for example, there's working groups subsumed under certain programs. That doesn't have to be the case. Working groups can operate completely independently. Again, it's quite polycentric in the way that we've tried to structure this, right? Um, but these are these are basically, you know, the, the leaders um, of the um, of of these uh, research portfolios who you know, are dedicating a significant amount of time to making headway, right, on the research side, on facilitating different events. Sometimes programs work together, you know, on events. It just, it just kind of depends um, on, the, uh, on, the, on the opportunities and on, and, and on the vision, because each program does differ um, a little bit. Um, so that, that, that's the main difference. Working groups, you know, consider them in the strong tradition of the workshop to be, you know, volunteer, completely, you know, um, driven, come and go, you know, pretty informal, pretty relaxed. Whereas the programs, these are folks that we think of as, you know, really dedicating a significant amount of their time to, um, to furthering, right? Furthering these goals, um, continuing to, you know, refine these tools and apply them to new arenas. So, okay. Um, and then, great. And I just saw Mike's text as well. Um, 
And then, yeah, Rachel, I'll, I'll double check. I, for some reason, I thought, and Carrie might be on. I think I saw her potentially join, but we'll double check if those uh, mentorship pairings haven't already been posted um, to Canvas. We'll get those up shortly, okay? So for anybody who's not aware, um, we'll, we'll get that sorted. Yeah, Scott, I'm here. Oh, oh hey, me. Carrie. I'm so sorry you joined. You're supposed to be on vacation. Well, <laughs> I was just popping in for a little bit and wanting to make sure everything was okay. But yeah, so if you're in Canvas, you should be able to go to the people on the left side and you'll see everyone in the course. And there's also a little section there called groups. And the groups are listed and everyone should have um, a group with their mentor there. So up at the top there, it says mentorship group next. Yep. And then um, you'll see, you'll have to expand them. The actual in mentors are not participants. So um, because I don't know, that's the way Canvas works. But this is an opportunity for you all to be able to share with one another. So if you want to have peer feedback on the things that you're submitting for the workshop, this will be an easy way for you guys to be able to communicate with the other people that will be in your groups for the last three sessions. I knew it was up there, Carrie. Thank you so much. And how about let's all give a round of applause to Carrie in particular for working so hard <laughs> on Yay. making this happen. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy your time in Colorado. Gosh darn it. I think we do have one other person from Denver, if I remember right. So, yes. Um, okay. Lovely. Lovely. Um, and then, Renata, you were asking for how long will you have access? Good question. I'll look into that. Um, I know we can keep renewing this for, for a bit. So it doesn't disappear overnight for sure. But we'll make sure if there is kind of for, you know, for non IU addresses or whatever. I know there's sometimes there's weird rules. We'll make sure that you have plenty of time to download anything you might like for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, great. Okay. And then any other questions before we turn to the programs themselves and some of those introductions? Um, and then Amina, yeah. So, uh, in terms of, um, you know, outreach to the mentors, you know, feel free, you can reach out to them at any point. You know, I think some of the mentors have already, you know, reached out to their, you know, designates as well. This is the first session. So that might not have happened yet, which is completely fine, but, um, you know, if that hasn't happened already and you'd like to go ahead and start a dialogue or maybe, you know, you're one of the folks who, hey, I'm kind of thinking about this different approach to my abstract or my research agenda. Great. You know, feel free. Start a conversation. That's what we're all here for. And reach out to me at any point, too. Needless to say. Um, oh, and then there. Yes. Yeah, so um, Ayoko and then, yeah, Sridipta, please. Yes, thank you. Um, what are the requirements to be um, a visiting scholar? Uh, in addition to a good research proposal. So yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. Um, I'll 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 share the link and just just bear with me just in a moment here. That has kind of all the information, but you know, in, in brief, you'd be expected to contribute to the intellectual life, you know, of the workshop. At a minimum, that means attending, you know, the Ostrom, uh, the the, uh, the colloquium series, the research series, participating in the class, you know, that Dan is teaching. Um, in the fall, if it happens to be in the spring, um, then, you know, we actually might have another course by next spring, but we'll, we, there's, there's other ways to kind of figure that out as well. Um, and then present, right? Ideally, you'd present in the research series uh, while you're here. Um, that's kind of traditionally how it works. Um, and then, you know, there, there's, other, there's other bits to it. And we do have a bit of a tweak on that for practitioners, but I think most of you, um, it sounds like fall in the, in the scholar category. Here is the link. Um, and thanks, thanks for saying that out, Dan. But ho hopefully that helps a bit, you know, Ayoko. Yeah. And then, yeah, Sridipta, please. Oh, I just want to mention, I'm not seeing Frank here, but I noticed that he hasn't um, accepted the, uh, the Canvas request, I think. So I just want to mention that. I think that's why he's not able to access Canvas. He mentioned on the chat that- Oh, sure. Know how it works. So it's still showing him as pending. Mm -hmm. Thanks for flagging that. Yeah, we'll work. We'll work with uh, we'll work with Frank. Oh, I love and I love the uh, the fluffy Zoom bomber. All all you know, whatever um, kids, pets doesn't matter. Feel free at any point. Our our second daughter's birthday is today, and she really wanted tadpoles. So maybe I'll hold up the tadpoles at some point. <laughs> okay. Um. Any other any other questions? Hey, we did it. We did it. Okay. We'll we'll keep them coming. Okay. But I just want to be respectful of our um, of our other colleagues' time as well. Who, kindly taking time out of their summer to join us and talk to us a little bit more about their programs. 
Um, so let's turn to that just for the last little bit, then we'll have some time at the end if there's any other final questions before we close for today. And again, these slides are up on week one, if anybody would like to take a look. Um, so yeah, so I'll keep, yeah, I'll, I'll keep this one very, very brief. Um, but if anybody's interested, maybe it relates, you know, in some loose ways to your own research or interests, happy to talk more about any of this. Um, the Cybersecurity and Internet Governance Program is one of those that you could classify under that, you know, new frontiers category um, in terms of, you know, clearly, you know, Lynn, you know, Charlotte has plenty of folks who are interested and worked on knowledge commons issues. Um, we've definitely tried to build on some of that work, as well as, you know, myself personally, with a lot of help from Dan, Mike, many others on the call, um, have tried to apply it in different contexts. I've written a lot, you know, for example, on, you know, cyber peace, this idea of kind of flipping the paradigm, you know, what's the best we can hope for in terms of, you know, peace on the internet, how can we, you know, build ultimately communication, coordination, finally trust, which as Lynn famously said is the most important resource in these different communities. Um, that happens at a lot of levels um, from these different platforms, um, all the way up, frankly, to internationally. In fact, this trip to Estonia next week is focusing on um, NATO uh, has a cybersecurity conference, but I'll be moderating a few sessions with ministers of um, foreign affairs talking about issues like attribution, due diligence, state responsibility for cyber attacks. Norms comes up in a lot of those contexts. And frankly, I found a lot of utility in leveraging a lot of the tools that you guys are going to be learning about and thinking about when these sit when these um, different um, you know multi stakeholder processes play out well when they fall flat and what we can learn from some of those experiences right. Um, like as one quick example we've been doing some stuff looking at uh, the Paris Accord, which is quite polycentric in structure figuring out how could you apply that to dealing with some thorny issues in cybersecurity and internet governance, particularly given the war. Uh, uh, between Russia and um, and Ukraine and how what what that's doing in terms of this new you know, frankly, digital Cold War that we see playing out as well and the increasing regionalization of the internet. And we do a lot of other stuff too around critical infrastructure protection. The cybersecurity clinic at IU is housed at the workshop in part because of that. This new edited volume on cyber peace, I'll put up a link in just a moment. It's under Cambridge Press's open, ac open access policy. We got some wonderful, you know, a su generous support to make that happen. So anybody can download it, you know, for free. Uh, there are a lot of wonderful scholars who dedicated time to building this out, including um, Jess has a great chapter with um, a number of, you know, workshoppers, um, including Frederica, um, Cyan Loyal, the former director of our political economy, uh, you know, program. Um, we have a number of others that dedicated, you know, work to this. So a lot of interesting stuff. The next project for what it's worth, uh, edited volume project that is, is on how to make democracy harder to hack. Um, that edited volume is going to be uh, co-edited with our with IU's former president, who is now chancellor, uh, Michael McRobbie, and then a professor, Frederic Duzet from Paris 8. And it's going to be, you know, focused, you know, more broadly on both threats to election infrastructure, as well as different attempts, approaches around the world to manage misinformation, disinformation, deep fakes with a lot of case studies, needless to say, from both practitioners, policymakers and, um, and scholars. So you'll be seeing a call going out in the next few weeks about that. So if any of you are interested in some of those issues of democratic integrity, etc. Um, there's an opportunity there. We also hosted a statewide cybersecurity summit with, with Notre Dame, as was mentioned earlier in Purdue um, last fall. That's going to continue again this fall. A lot of other stuff um, in the works, but I won't bore you with too many details. Um, would love to help. Would love to help. Any of you, needless to say, doesn't have to pertain to internet governance, cyber stuff. Um, but that's just a little bit about what um, some of our groups have been um, up to. And there's a lot of other fun Fun stuff coming up, including a, a roundtable that we're trying to, I think, shoot for late August uh, to host that's going to be around this intersection of sustainability and cybersecurity. So what lessons can we learn from the sustainable development movement with regards to, you know, labeling, certification schemes, etc. So that's going to be a fun discussion. And I'll let Eaton talk more about the Space Cyber Workshop, which is taking place uh, next month that we're doing a partnership um, with a variety of institutions, including Laval. And then Angie might mention the, Angie, I mentioned just a little bit earlier that recent transatlantic dialogue with uh, Virginia Tech and HC, HEC Paris. That was brilliant as well. So uh, maybe we'll turn to that in just a second. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, so Angie would love to hear more about, you know, the, about your program, anything you'd like to share. It doesn't have to be, you know, specifically what you see on the screen. <laughs> uh, but what, what, yeah, would welcome any, anything you'd like to add. 
Hello, everyone. They have these slides, right? So they can look back at this. It, exactly. They sure do. Yep. Yeah. So I guess I'll highlight just a couple things on here or maybe go to the next slide, because if I recall correctly, these break out. Yeah. So we do. We're doing, you know, sort of tons of stuff in the area of data and information and the way that those uh, are governed uh, everywhere from the digital world to the physical world to you know, the combination of the two, which presents uh, interesting conversations, right? Especially in the context of, um, you know, the different frameworks that we use. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, this is obviously done for our annual report. So it's designed to, you know, sort of do some, some number counting. Um, but I think there are a couple of things to, to really focus on here. And, and the first is um, the, the particular working groups, actually, I'm pretty proud of our working groups. Um, there are some of them that actually work, which I do mean, there's been a couple publications about a, a data commons framework, you know, how that, how data commons should be established, the rules and structures. And um, that's, that's a, for those of you who are on the IU email, uh, that's something that I'm leading here at IU over the next couple months of trying to get IU to establish a research data commons Keep your fingers crossed. Um, don't get too excited. Uh, we also do tons of work in like digital citizenship, di digital uh, communities. And of course that builds in then to the salon series, uh, which is called Beyond the Web, which the Searles uh, run. We're going to have various uh, Ostromites, let's call it that, uh, speaking. Those are gonna be on Mondays. Right now they're, they're either the second or third of each month, each Monday of each month. Well, that came out wrong, sorry. Uh, and it, and some of them are in person and some of them will be virtual because obviously the tech people are very much um, you know, capable of doing these type of things really good. And so we don't want if, you know, coming in person sometimes presents a limitation. So we want this to be a very broad conversation. So some of the salon series is in person and some of it is virtual, but it will of course always be broadcast in the workshop. And then, you know, as as Scott has mentioned, we did the, the transatlantic dialogue on AI and humanity. That was an incredible success, very stressful, I must tell you. But Ostrom has been branded all over the place. Uh, if you want to keep up on all of this stuff, first of all, the best way is really to sign up to our various listservs. And at times you'll feel like you're getting way too many emails, but it's, it's just because of the productivity uh, that we have. But then you can also follow me on Twitter. I use, uh, and it's just my name in all fairness, um, you know, Andrew Raymond. Um, I, uh, I'll, I'll get to that question in a second. I, I only tweet professionally unless you consider, uh, you know, I use sports to be a bit an uh, annoying at times. So for the most part, it's all professional in, you know, unless we win a big football game or whatever. So you'll never be burdened by that because we work on everything from privacy to surveillance. We work with the IEEE. We're working with smart and connected communities, smart and connected cities. I mean, just sort of fill in the blank on all kinds of stuff. Almost anywhere you'll find data, we're probably got a finger in it. We're probably going to do some stuff with the School of Education about surveillance as students, which is a hot topic right now. Uh, and so, you know, I'll 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 stop burdening you with my with my uh, my lecture. And I will tell you because I I don't know if Scott mentioned there's a new website that's coming out that also, quite frankly, our website is. Um, underutilized, let's do it that way, or not effectively designed. And so there'll be a lot more information on the website, which will uh, allow people to connect much easier as well. I promised to look at the couple of questions here that I got in here. Uh, oh, Scott already got them. Oh, yeah, no, no worries. No, and sorry for like the, the changes of the, the screen. I was just trying to provide some okay. useful links. <laughs> yeah, really it's okay. So I will tell you, I mean, this is, I think Mike mentioned it and others have mentioned it, but, you know, um, you know, the data commons framework that's come out, that was, you know, Mozilla, Microsoft, um, you know, you name it, they're doing some stuff with us and Scott can say the same thing. So, you know, it is sort of fun to not just be, you know, quite frankly, a researcher who's writing about what, you know, Google does, but to actually have, you know, the Google types in the room telling us what they're going to do. So, you know, a lot of these um, are just information sent sessions designed to give people access to particular individuals in, in places so they can, you know, engage with them on a more, uh, you know, important matter such as governance, you know. So mm -hmm. reach out if you have questions, of course always reach out if you have questions and sign up for the listserv you'll get spoofed you'll get you'll get spammed a lot but that we are doing a lot 
<laughs> yeah. It, but like you said, it's better at least to know what's going on and then you can kind of pick. I know this can be very people. overwhelming and that's only touching the, the tip of what we do. Uh, there's going to be tons of stuff on campus next year. Super excited. We're back in person. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Um, great. Any, any, any questions, anything for Angie? Hmm. This is really, really helpful. Angie. Yeah. And just to give you a sense, I mean, one of the last speakers in the, in the data salon series was Shoshana Zuoff just like a month ago, the author of surveillance capitalism. Um, uh, so that, and there's a lot of exciting speakers coming up. So definitely, you know, beam in and just all you have to do is follow that link to become an affiliate, to get on all those lists and you'll be good to go. Yeah. And I, and I should say, I think Scott and I are both mm -hmm. very proud of the technology infrastructure that now exists at the workshop. And so, you know, if you see something in person, don't get frustrated. We, we broadcast everything. We put it on YouTube. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, we are part of a belief that you need to keep all of this open and the dialogue needs to include everybody. So, and we have a real commitment to that. Absolutely. And that, that's a good call on YouTube, Angie. That, and David kindly does this for us as well, but here's a link to the workshops YouTube channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to it and you might like to, you can do so easily by just going there. There we go. Okay. Um, fantastic. All right. And excellent. So yeah, any any questions? Anything else for Angie? Angie, thanks for joining. Of so good course. to see you. Happy to do it. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Um, and then okay, so if that sounds good, next we'll turn to uh, to Jess and the um, the energy program. Hi everyone. Um, so as Scott mentioned, and as I mentioned earlier, I am sort of actually newly a director of the Environment and Natural Resource Governance Program. Um, so this is really exciting. We've made a few uh, changes um, since I joined the team, one of which is to sort of expand. We used to be called the Natural Resource Governance Program, but we added on the framework of the environment for a variety of reasons, some of which I'm sure are quite uh, probably obvious to you guys. but. Um, you know, we have a we have a long history um, at the workshop in terms of actual substantive interest, right? As as some of you are hopefully aware by now, um, the Ostroms really um, uh, focused a lot of their work on natural systems and socio uh, ecological systems, right? And so, um, and so uh, there's there's a long sort of trajectory and and history of theoretical and empirical work at the workshop on questions of sustainable management of natural resources, the environment more broadly, um, particularly uh, natural resources that are commons. So we can think about um, uh, Ostrom's uh, lobster studies and a variety of others. Um, so uh, um, I joined in, in July, but have really come on uh, sort of full strength in January. And we've added this framework of the environment to think more broadly about a sort of system of social and ecological um, uh, components and how they might interact and the sort of ways we can think about governance um, for maintaining um, these systems, both from a social as well as a, a natural perspective. Um, and so uh, I, I co-direct this program with uh, Dean Luke, who's over in, over in economics, at least for a few more months, and then he'll be cycling off. Um, we have, as you can see, a large number of um, sort of affiliates and researchers um, really across disciplines, right? So, so I'm a, a political scientist by training. Uh, my colleague, Dean Luke, is an economist. Um, we have sort of hydrologists, anthropologists, um, geologists, a wide range of folks um, thinking about um, what are uh, inherently sort of complex problems of sustainably managing our natural resources um, and environment. Now, we um, have uh, sort of in terms of our uh, working groups, we have a few that um, we are sort of just getting started and some, some, some other ones as well. So the environment and uh, or energy and environmental justice is a working group that um, is just getting going sort of across uh, IU, uh, but, but sort of largely based at the workshop and the O'Neill School to think about the distributive consequences of, of a just energy transition. Um, we also have a law and economics working group that is largely headed up uh, by um, Professor Dean Luke. 
Um, and a few other ideas thinking uh, more broadly about um, sort of uh, new areas in um, commons governance of natural resources and um, environmental systems. In terms of our programming, um, we, um, you know, we have an, an, an annual environmental policy lecture that's always really uh, wonderful. This upcoming year will be um, Professor Asim Prakash, who is over at the University of Washington. Um, he has worked, he actually uh, was at Indiana University for some time um, and uh, does wonderful work in the area of climate governance um, and uh, sort of managing emissions, managing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, uh, what else to say? Um, some other areas we're looking to sort of expand um, in is uh, include sort of indigenous management of natural resources in the environment. Um, so thinking about native populations with the understanding that um, uh, a general consensus is that native communities tend to manage resources better than non-native communities. So thinking about what that means and why. Um, so if you're interested in that sort of question, reach out to me. That's sort of a new idea uh, we're starting to think about. Um, and uh, let's see, what else? I'm trying to think if there's anything else that is important to, to bring up here. Um, oh, I guess there's a longstanding sort of, um, you know, it, one of the areas of, of um, natural resource governments that's sort of been core to the workshop since, uh, since it was founded is, is that of sort of forestry governance. And so we are um, in, in talks to think about um, revisiting and restarting an, uh, an, an initiative called the um, Institutions for Forestry uh, Research, or Institutions and Forestry Research, um, called, essentially IFRI. That, um, that was started when uh, Lynn Ostrom was still around to look at understanding forest user groups in a local context around the world. So there's sort of these collaborative research centers in, in, in Brazil, in Uganda, in Kenya, um, to, sort, to try to understand the ways in which communities are using forestry resources in sustainable ways. Um, and so this is, this is something that we're hoping to get back up and running again. Um, and again, if that's something that you're interested in, please reach out to me or, um, or more broadly, right, ideas or thoughts that you have um, uh, about sort of the Environment Natural Resource Governance Program writ large. Um, let's see, what else? I'm not sure, I guess I'll open it up to questions at this point um, uh, to see if there's any thoughts or ideas or questions you have about um, about the Natural Resource Governance Program or the Environment and Natural Resource Governance Program now. Thank you so much, Jess. Yes, please, questions, comments. I know it's a bit of a Zoom marathon, everybody, yes. but yeah, any, any, anything yeah. come to mind for Jess? And please reach out. I know I'm not on the a program um, for the rest of the of the workshop and part or the boot camp in part because I will be actually at my own boot camp. Um, but please reach out if this is an area of interest to you. I'd love to to talk with you or to facilitate any sort of connections or research that you might be interested in um, here at the workshop. We're all students, Jess. Absolutely. Yeah, Sridipta, please. I can ask a question. I feel like I'm asking too many questions. No, no, um, no, no, it's great. So uh, I'm just checking the affiliation form. Um, and this is my question to Professor Steinberg. Uh, it's just, it's like a Google form and it looks pretty simple. So is that all that is required to um, submit the application or should I, uh, if I want to join, should I also reach out to you? Or is, is there like a statement of purpose or something that I need to write? No, I think it's just the application, although I'm happy if you'd like to reach out. Um, we can also just have a, a, an informal conversation. If that would be helpful to you, I'm happy to do that as well. But I, I think, and Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's just the straight up application. Um, pretty straight, yeah. It's not It's not meant to be super complicated. We, we, want, we want people to join us here. So, um, so if you're interested, please do fill that out. Thank you. Yeah, Jess is exactly right. That that's all you need to do. But absolutely, I mean, feel free to reach out. That's always nice to put, you know, just to have those conversations, and and we can help in, um, uh, facilitate, right? We can help introduce you to others who share similar interests. Uh, Jamie Beasley, please. I was just gonna say, Jess, I will definitely be reaching out. Um, I'm studying 
uh, the failure of the drinking water system in Jackson, Mississippi, um, particularly on the local level. Um, so this is like, you know, right up in my thing. So I'll be reaching out. <laughs> to yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, as, as Scott mentioned, you know, we're not really exactly organized along particular um, resources per se, but I do think that there's reaching a, crit a critical mass around water. Um, and questions of water management, groundwater management, et cetera. So, um, so I'd love to talk to you about that and sort of how we can um, sort of support you in this question uh, in any way we can. Spot on. Yeah, there's there's a number of us that have have similar interests, along with you know Bill Blomquist, who you'll be hearing from, um, and a, and a big contingent at UC Davis, among other institutions too. So, great. Um, any any other Questions for Jess. Okay. Oh, a little bit more about IFRI. Okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So IFRI was um, uh, the sort of result of a grant that was developed by um, Lynn Ostrom, I believe, and Arun Agarwal and a few others. Um, Dan, Dan, were you on that grant? I don't remember. It's it's possible. I was, I, I was not. I was. Okay. Um, started a little before I got okay. sort of deeply okay. involved in the Yeah, work. it goes back a while, yeah. Yeah, and I should say, you know, um, my experience with IFRI is, is kind of funny. The very first class I took in grad school was an IFRI class, which is essentially um, the IFRI class, or the IFRI um, sort of network is essentially a, um, uh, the result of a grant aimed at gathering comparative information about how local communities use and manage forests um, at, at the local level and over time, particularly how do they develop rules for, um, for you know, using the forest and forest and non-forest products. Um, and also how do they, um, and what are the long-term effects of this? And so um, the, the, the grant itself established these collaborative research centers around the world where local researchers would receive training on um, sort of implementing these surveys to community user groups of, forest, of forests. Um, and then all of the data was sort of commonly held to be able to look at under what conditions do community um, com uh, common property regimes actually um, have different kinds of effects on uh, forests at the local level. Now, I should say this is a this was a really, really big, impressive project, and it's been a little bit dormant for a while, in part because some of the goals were actually achieved um, in terms of what it was it set out to do. Um, but I've been working with some colleagues at Notre Dame, and then um, one of the initial founders, um, Ashwini Shatra, who's uh, at the Indian School of Business, to think about ways of um, reinvigorating it, whether there's a new version of it that might work, particularly in concert with the FLARE network, which is a forest livelihoods um, network of scholars um, as well. So this is um, sort of, we're, we're just sort of starting to revisit this idea. Um, the IFRI website is still up and running. So let me, um, it's a little bit out of date again, because this is a, a sort of new idea. Um, to sort of reinvigorate and see what we can do with it. But I'm going to put the link here in the chat anyway. Um, and I myself have actually used some of the questionnaires that are listed or the tools for sort of surveying local communities about forestry use um, in some work that I'm doing on um, natural, on sort of community forestry management um, in fragile regions of conflict. And so um, it's a wonderful set of tools. It's a wonderful network. Um, and again, you'll note that some of the things are a little bit out of date, but we are um, we are revisiting it. And please let me know if this is something that you're interested in. Be happy to talk more with you about it. Thanks so much, Jason. Yeah, Renata. Sorry, I just want to know. I am the one who is winning with uh, asking too much questions. Siri uh, Dipta, so don't worry. Jess, I just wanted to ask, I, I, I might have missed that there is this event about property rights and characteristics of resources uh, in this slide. And uh, what is the date of this event? Oh. Is it an online event or is it a yeah. present? So I should say, um, just like the data um, at the other slides here, some of these were, um, so the general idea was sort of saying the thing, the kinds of things that we have done. Um, but I actually, so this is an event that's already occurred, but I think that it's recorded and it was actually co-sponsored between a common property regime or the commons uh, directorship, um, or the commons program, sorry. <laughs> And, um, and this was really sort of rethinking um, the sort of uh, 
you know, uh, Lynn and Vincent's sort of original characterization of excludability and rivalrousness, which you'll probably be talking about quite a bit over the course of um, the next couple of weeks. Um, so this was just a really wonderful lecture to sort of think about where we are with that characterization of goods and, and how we can push and rethink it in different ways. Um, and, and, and Scott, we do still have some of these things on uh, like, a, um, an arc, like a Zoom archive of some sort, right? Because this was a great yeah. conversation. Yep, they should all be on that Ostrom okay. YouTube channel. Um, and there they are, as you'll see when you go there. Um, there's different there's different tabs and playlists that David kindly helps us to organize. So if it if it's not clear, let let us know. But hopefully if you just tool around on that for a second, yeah, no problem, Renata. Um, and thanks again, Jess. This is excellent, just really helpful. I'm mindful of the time and the fact that we have it looks like about three minutes left. <laughs> and I know it's been a long, a long kickoff session here. It's been a fire hose of information. So um, let's just finish off perhaps with a few final a few final thoughts here. Um, like I mentioned, Enza Thiesfeld uh, involved clearly in this program as a mentor as well. Um, helped to take over for Bill Blumquist on our Commons uh, program, newest program, but clearly, you know, oldest in a lot of ways as well. Um, involved in a tremendous amount of these different initiatives and uh, collaborations, including the one on around common property that was just mentioned, as well as Food Commons, etc. And as I said, stay tuned on some new updates with Commons. Political economy, again, Gustavo is kindly involved, and several of you will be his mentees. Um, and a lot of these uh, issue areas, he's, as you can tell here, really interested. I mean, has done a lot of work with political economy of pandemics, conflict, ungoverned spaces, et cetera. News, as you see there, a new initiative on factor endowments. Um, James Farmer leads the Sustainable Food Systems. He's also director of the Food Institute. There's a lot of interesting work, and, a, and I think really applicable to several of you. Um, uh, so let, let me know. In other words, if you'd like to be introduced to James Farmer and his team, I'm really happy to be the facilitator there. Um, space governance, Eaton, I apologize for the for that time is running so short, but I'm wondering anything you'd like to offer on the on, on that might be out of this world on the space front? I'm going to keep the puns coming. <laughs> oh, I wonder if Eaton had to drop off. He might have. Oh, I'm, no, there you are. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm here. So I will share the link to to the to the web page so uh, you can see the details there. And if you have any questions, you can also see there how to reach out and uh, ask questions. And you're all welcome to join any of the activities and the workshop uh, ne next month. You are invited to to take part in any of this. Absolutely. Yeah, really interesting issues that you might not expect around data sovereignty, internet access, human rights that are kind of like increasingly part of this much bigger conversation um, uh, and, and attribution, frankly, as well as orbital debris mitigation, you name it. So um, really interesting aspects there. Thanks for joining um, Eden for all your work on heading this up for us. There's a lot of priorities, needless to say, guys, but I know we're out of time, so I could not be just more excited. Um, to join all of you in this journey together. Again, if anything remains unclear, don't hesitate to reach out. Remember, next week we're going to be featuring both Dan um, and Mike, or it's going to be just a fantastic substantive kickoff for us. But in the meantime, you know, don't be strangers and, and welcome. We're so excited to have you in the Ocean Workshop Summer Academy. So I, I will close there for now, but I'll stay on, okay, in case there's any other final questions. But um, just thanks again to you all for joining. Um, and thanks again to, in particular, to Carrie, um, to Emily and David for all of, their, all of their hard work on making this happen. So thank you again. Um, and like I said, happy to hang out if there's any other final questions, but look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. <laughs>